This is This is Rugby Radio Rugby Radio with Stuart Cameron Hello and welcome to Rugby Radio, which comes to you live from Philip Hawk in Selkirk today for the Premiership game between Selkirk and Jed Forrest. And with both teams still without a win after the first two rounds, they find themselves in the bottom two in the table. So very, very important that both clubs get something out of today to kickstart their season. We're here with you this afternoon till five o'clock to bring you live commentary on the match from Dale Clancy and Scott Tomlinson. The match kicks off at three o'clock, but there's a full card up and down the country and we'll keep you up to date on latest scores as they happen. There's also, of course, another rather large derby just down the road, and that's uh, obviously Hoyk against Kelso. Hoyk losing last weekend at Mar. Their long unbeaten record has gone, and Kelso, of course, still unbeaten at the moment with uh, two draws for the first two games of the season. But I mentioned part of the commentary team this afternoon is Scott Tomlinson, and also we have uh, Dale Clancy here as well. So we'll have a wee chat with them first of all, and, uh, well, two big, big games. Still. Yeah, definitely. Especially, you know, they're kind of contrasting games slightly because Hoyk and Kelso have got off to a, a great start to the season. And obviously, indifferent because Hoyk had that defeat against Mar on the road, but, you know, they still picked up a, a good win against the Glasgow Hawks. But this game here at Philip Hawk, I think this is. You know, it's, it's, it's not to talk down or, or, or try and hype it up or anything, but I think there's, this is a, a bigger game than than just, you know, getting a win in the Premiership to try and kickstart your season. I think this is going to have huge ramifications for both clubs going forward, but, you know, that's, um, that's up to the players on the pitch to decide what way they're going to go in the future. And Scott, of course, you've been uh, involved with both uh, both teams, Selkirk, as a player, and, uh, well, you coached Jed Forrest for a wee while, so you, you'll have a good idea of, uh, you know, what the two are going through in the preparations. Yeah, I, I think Gail's right in what he's saying. That, you know, there's a lot of nervous energy going about just now already, even even on the training paddock at the moment. Um, there's a lot of faces that are recognised from within the Jed ranks. Andy Dean for the circuit rank, so you know, I, and I know quite a lot of the players. So it'll be really interesting to see how they react to the whole situation today. Um, normally, you would get these sort of games at the end of the season. This is coming in hard and fast at the beginning of the season, so it'll be interesting to see where where it all heads. So it's a, a basement battle between uh, Selkirk in ninth and Jed Forrest in, in tenth place. None of them scoring any points, not even uh, losing bonuses. Sadly, in their first two games. And earlier, I spoke with Sesh Henderson, the head coach with Selkirk, and David Grieve, who's part of the coaching setup at Jed Forrest. But let's hear first of all from Sesh Henderson. First derby of the season. Um, it's also a border league double header, but I guess that will be further from your mind at the moment. It's all about getting the points today. Absolutely. I've, I've just said to the guys, let's take the emotion out of the derby game. And the key is for us as a performance, as a squad, in terms of high energy, physicality, winning collisions, making good decisions, and sticking to you know our game plan, what we've been talking about all week. And if, if we execute that, then look, we'll be close to points but we've got to execute it. Because the first couple of games, from all accounts, you've been very good in the first hour and maybe just slipped away in the last 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. against Curry, you know, we had our chances. Uh, first half especially, um, we played really well. Um, second half, um, you know, we scored a couple of good tries, but we fell away the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they scored. They just took the game away from us. Similar to last week as well. 7-5 um, up, five minutes for half time, gave away two, two scores we were disappointed with. Then they scored right after half time and then the game you know just tweeted out for their form us so we're disappointed with that performance but today we need a performance presumably it's not a fitness <coughs> thing is it the, the last 20 minutes because i mean you know they, they've they've done a really good hard uh, pre-season yeah. um is it just a lack of concentration or what is it uh look the pre-season was tough you know we, we worked really hard uh, we just i felt we were a game short going into that first league game and we're catching up but now there's, there's no excuses now this is the fourth game uh, we played, you know, after playing bigger, then this is a third league game. So there's no excuses in terms of fitness. It's just about getting that accuracy. You know, work, it, work rate off the ball is more important than on the ball. Um, so we're in, we're in position to attack or defend, and that's you know we need to be quicker than name and getting organised. And I think it's fair to say both for Selkirk and for Jed Forrest today, it, it's a kind of a rebuilding season. A lot of new names coming up from uh, you know the Jed Thistle and from Selkirk Youth Club as well, and uh, they've got to have time to bed in really. 
hundred percent. You know, Andrew Grant sat out only played a few games last year. With Callum Anderson coming back, uh, Finlay Whelan's starting again. Um, so that's why I decided to put Ross Nixon straight in there. A bit of leadership as well in midfield. Cameron Easton's been playing well, but he needs a little wee bit of help from outside the man and them with, with Aaron McComb and, and Ross there. So I think that'll really help his game today. Um, but because you, when he's on it, you can control the game. Uh, young Cameron and, and you know in, in the park you know we've got you know Donald Nicol back to the back row we've got Connor Ward back in the second row so it's giving a wee bit of extra weight there um, even though Zen's not playing today like Jake's, Jake's turned up pretty well at training during the week and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him perform today yeah of course no Bruce Riddle either he got injured but hopefully he'll be no, back soon no Bruce Riddle I had to mention that was his wife to my to my right you know so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, know, I think Bruce was you know it was a possibility he could have played here but you know, it's sensible on him not to play, so he's available for the next few weeks. Now, border derbies can be real <laughs> torrid affairs, yeah. um, particularly when it's rained. We had very heavy rain last yeah. night. I have to say, I, I came here today at Philip Hawk thinking we were going to see puddles all over the pitch. The pitch is looking actually great. It's quite long grass yeah. out there. Um, but how do you see this one? Because, I mean, Jed and Selkirk traditionally do like to throw the ball about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we want to play some rugby in the right areas, so, though. You know, we don't want to be to play in too deep. We want to get territory, then, then, then play some really good rugby because that's what, how we've been training and, you know, both teams don't want an arm wrestle. Okay, that's, sometimes these border classes can turn into that and uh, that's, that's not the kind of rugby we want. Okay, we're ready for it if that happens, but really we want to get into good positions and attack uh, what we've been doing at training. So, Of course, there's a mental thing involved in this as well, isn't there? Because you've lost your first two games, you're mm. sitting at the, the bottom end of the table, no points as yet. How... How does that affect things in the dressing room in what's sort of leading up to today? Because it is a vital kind of game against your, your neighbours who are, who are joining you at the bottom right. of the moment. Look, it's disappointing when you lose. There's no doubt about that. Players train really hard during the week and they put a shift in on a Saturday. And even though it's maybe the most accurate shift or things happen that we didn't get over the line, they work really hard so they're disappointed. And that's a good thing. You know, but at training, Tuesday and Thursday, we've had 38 boys there working really hard uh, with, the, with the first and the A team together. And that's how that's how I want to do it. I want players to, you know, push each other in the, in the training park. And ultimately, in the coaching team, this will get players better. That's what I want to do. Make them, make them so they come a Saturday, they want to go again. You know, and, and today's another challenge for us. Massive challenge. Um, but if, we're, if we execute the game plan, then points are there if we want to take them. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Okay, thank you, Stuart. David Grieve with me now from the uh, Jed Forrest uh, coaching team. And um, and it really is a kind of a, a, a cooperative uh, yeah, yeah. outfit at the moment. T to explain what, what's, what's going on. Well, there's, there's four of us. There's, there's myself, Neil Cook, Ross Goodfellow and you and Scott. We're all prepared to help out. Um, gets two forwards, two backs. So there's plenty of experience there. And we've got Kev Barry's down to just kind of oversee things as well. Give his experience, give his... Opinions and what an experience he's had. He's uh, got. Oh, well, he's never he's never been wrong yet. So, <laughs> yeah, it's quite good. <laughs> Excellent. And of course, he he, w he was obviously involved in Selkirk as well. So he'll yep. have given you a bit of an insight into uh, into the Selkirk way. I has I I spoke a lot about that this week. So, the boys are very well prepared. Now it's been a disappointing start so far for both sides. Uh, mm. So this you know game round number three now it, it becomes quite an important match. How, how have you approached this one? Uh, we just try to build. Um, we didn't have the best pre-season, so we kind of looked at the last two weeks as our pre-season, and the season kind of starts today. So we we're looking for a positive performance. We're looking to pick up points, and that, that's the main aim today. Like, and of course, I've been following Jed Forrest for a long, long time, and uh, mm -hmm. I've never seen so many new names on the team sheet uh, that I've got to learn. Uh, so tell us who who we can look forward to we're just, today. Uh, we're, we're just transitioning a wee bit. Um, we've got Mark Glennon at fullback. He's usually a scrum half, but he's he's a good utility player. Um, and he's up from the thistle. He's up from the thistle. He's, he's actually still aged for the thistle, but he's kind of wanting to challenge his cell, and he's wanting to watch. Um, Jamie Ferguson's kind of stepped in, stepped in at hooker. Um, he's, he's really good in the loose. He's just coming to getting his bearings in the set piece with his scrum and line outs, um, he's, he's one to watch as well. Like so, And we've got a few, obviously, older faces like Skelly and Gary Monroe there to 
uh, steady the ship, hopefully. Absolutely. Robbie Shiragib is another Robbie name to throw in there. Aye. So so that's certainly good. And I was actually down at the People's Sevens and I saw Jed Thistle win that aye. in the under-18s, I think it was. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and that's encouraging, isn't it, to, to see the club uh, producing youngsters who will hopefully go on through and, and play for the full team. I definitely. I think like the under-16s as well and under-18s is thriving at the moment. There's a lot of, a lot of good talent there. And we just have to give them something to come up for, can give them a bit of hope, give them... I know it's to be an ambitious club, but a community club at the same time. So we just have to have something there for everyone. If they want to be ambitious, good. If they want to play socially, then equally as good. Like, and I was just talking to to Sesh uh, earlier on, the, the head coach of Selkirk, and um, both clubs are very very similar, aren't they? Yeah. They love to play attacking rugby, yep. and they're both going through a, a really a transition phase now. I definitely, I it's it's kind of uh, Mustin Selkirk who always like to throw the ball about and play play in the white channels, but. There's been a lot, especially with us, there's been a lot of changes in our back line and maybe now we're forwards are our strength, so you know, it might be a slightly different approach from us today anyways. So. Because for the first time, I think, ever, <laughs> certainly for the last 15 years, there's no young, no there's young no youngs on, on the team sheet, which aye. is, uh, which I know obviously they've got uh, uh, plenty to worry about at, at home in terms aye. of new young families and things like that, so aye. they're not going to be as available as they were before, and of course, you know, they're both in the 30s now. Aye, exactly, and, and Callum's in Australia as well. Yes, like, so it's, there's with Robbie Yorston and a few others. Robbie Yorston, I and I think there's... I think there's a couple of others as well, like I uh, so and there's Finn Scott obviously he's in New Zealand, so it's kinda of big losses them. They've been the kind of staple of the squad for the past ten years. So we've looked at the, the, the kind of the team sheet there and we've mentioned Mark Glenn and every everyone I talk to um in Jed Forge is really excited about uh, seeing Mark play. Uh you've got obviously Lewis Elder, Owen Cranston who's who's yeah, been yeah, there a couple yeah. of years now. Lewis Walker, of course, mm-hmm. from from Australia. Yeah. Um and well, the one that stands out for me here, Paolo Ferreira, who well, has retired, what, how many times? <laughs> three, I think. Yes, well, he's back. He's oh, well, back. well, actually, he's, he's called off this morning. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Kiss well, of death. Aye, so he's got a bit of a problem with his ankle, so he's, right. he's, uh, he's had to call off this morning. So, so uh, Ryan Briggs is going to start for us in... John Story's uh, going to sit on the bench. Right, OK, so a late change there. Uh, but but just seeing Paolo back on the aye. pitch again, I mean, that must have been an interesting discussion because he was adamant uh, he was going to give it up. We kind of left it to last minute because <laughs> we wanted him to enjoy his pre-season. Uh, well, enjoy his time off anyways, and we've left it to the last minute, but then Paolo's a, he's a true club man. Yeah. He'll not see us stuck like so. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, I mean, he's just a try-scoring uh, machine, isn't he? I, I think people realise that. I think he's... The first time he retired, when we got him back, he scored 11 tries that season. So yeah. It's not just replacing a tight head prop, it's replacing a try scorer as well. Like, so yeah. It's no easy f- uh, boots to fill anyways. Yeah, fantastic. Well, we'll, we'll hopefully see him again soon. But uh, obviously, it's. Uh, I mean, we've had a lot of rain uh, last night. Um, there's quite a lot of grass on the pitch, I've noticed. So mm-hmm. uh, at least there's no puddles. But uh, how's that going to suit everyone? We just have to get on with it. It's the same with both teams, so it shouldn't be an excuse, I don't think. Uh, Best of luck to you. And no bother, cheers. There you are. That was David Grieve uh, talking to me earlier, He's part of the coaching team at Jed Forest, and before that, Sesh Henderson, the head coach of Selkirk. Well, we mentioned earlier that there is a big game going on in uh, Hoyk today at Mansfield Park. It's uh, Hoik against Kelso and uh, hopefully if the elastic bands and the chewing gum's working, we'll have David Ferguson on the end of the line. Hello, David. We're not really hearing you, David, if you can hear us, but we'll come back to you shortly. And in the meantime, we'll go to Dale Clancy and uh, and Scott Tomlinson, who are still with us again in reserve, just in case something like that happens. What a step doing that is from David Ferguson, isn't it, having to pass to us too? <laughs> I know, but it uh, has to be done. Um, obviously, we've just heard the, the, the two coaches or, or the, the coaching staff there. There's a, a lot of nerves there. There's a lot at stake here, isn't there? Yeah, I think there is. And I think this comes back, like, you know, I've said before, before, like I've obviously I've, I've not got a foot in any camp here. I just like the kind of narrative of the the league and where things go. But just looking at it on paper, you know, both teams got zero points. They've both had difficult starts to the campaign, and there's been a big turnover of players as well. Some experienced players left both clubs, um, you know. And if that is something which is going to be a sign of what's going to come in the future, then it is quite ominous for both clubs. Now that's not to put the boot in because um, you know there's one team going to go down this year it's not to say it's going to be Jed or Selkirk but they've not got off to the best starts and I just think nowadays in the way that community club rugby is if you get dropped out of the premiership now and that's the sort of pattern that you've been having in a club it's that much more difficult to get back in so you know you, you heard there um, obviously from the, the, the Jed camp talking about wanting to make it a community and a competitive club and 
I, I do think that it's difficult to have both nowadays with the player movement, the, the, the options to play rugby. It's a nice it's a nice idea to have, but it's it's difficult to find that balance. So, you know, if you if you want to have that community time, sometimes you might just find your level. Now, that is that is me just talking, you know, off the top of my head, looking at this game on paper. But you do have to think that at some point one of these clubs might find their, their level. And I don't know if you agree with that, Scott, or if I'm talking out of line. But it's certainly that, that's what makes this game so intriguing. I, th- I think you're absolutely right, Dale. I think that the difficulty with it, if you look at Jed, there's a population of, what, three and a half thousand um, people in, in, in Jed, you know, a smaller club. That, are, that have done really, really well over the years to, to then stay within the Premiership. Uh, and Selkirk's much the same population of 500,000, so it's always difficult to the smallest schools in the Scottish borders. So even at S1, S2, under 15s, under 16s level, Jed and Selkirk are punching well above their weight just to be within the, in totally. the fight in every game of rugby. And that's the difficulty you've got with it. So you're always, your Jeds and your Selkirk are always needing to recruit one or two players that are going to make a difference to the team. Um, Selkirk went through a spell years ago with, with Kev Barry that was involved as coach at Selkirk at the time and there was a, a South African guy called Eddie Gushy and he made the difference of that team and the rest of the guys were Selkirk players, your Lee Jones, your, your uh, Fraser Hartness of the world you know. but that one player made the difference and, and galvanised the town and everybody got behind them, got huge crowds watching the games and that's all it takes sometimes so the recruitment is, is huge you look at what Ethan Riley did for Hoyt last year. You know, one one player comes in and then really complements the rest of the squad. You look at these two teams. That's probably what they're lacking. Yeah, uh, uh, in Selkirk, for example, you've got Sutty there at, at centre that can make a difference. But probably James Head last year in the park made a huge difference and will be a massive miss to Selkirk this year. Um, so, so then you're looking at your homegrown players, or your Gary Monroe, your Clark Skeldon, who's obviously been involved in the in the Southern Knights and came off the back of that looking fit. Your Harry Meadows of the world that they brought in. These are the players that can make a difference. Your Blade Ruff that have, that's been at Jed now for a long time. These are the guys that have got to stand up and be counted. And, and they're the ones that should be maturing the younger players that's coming through. So your Mark Glens of the world who's who's playing you know, who's playing a year early, really. He should still be playing for the Thistle. Uh, I mean if you look at Jed's example, the sixteens and the eighteens, they're going really, really well. Uh, Mike, Mike has got them going really well as a development officer, doing well at, at both age groups, and the Thistle will be there or thereabouts this year again within the Scottish Championship. So the, the depth's there, it's then making sure you almost don't want them to go to university, you want them to stay within the town, and you want them to be involved in apprenticeships and the, and the town to try and help and support them to stay within the club. That's a difficulty. Well, we'll be talking more about schools and uh, youth rugby very shortly with Alan Lorimer, who's uh, joined us. But let's have another crack at, uh, at getting um, David Ferguson at Mansfield Park, hopefully using the right microphone now. Are you there, David? <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, we can, yeah. loud and clear. So, uh, well done. Congratulations on working the equipment. That's all good news. And what a match in prospect at Mansfield Park today. Yeah, it's cracker. I mean, we're watching the, from the back of the stand, watching these teams warm up, Kelso and Hoyk, today here at Mansfield Park. They've got a good day for it we thought there'd be a lot of rain but it's drying out overhead a little bit of a wind and I'm joined by Neil Hinnigan the um, director of rugby with Kelso of course and, and Neil this is a kind of challenge we talked about before the season started you you know you've got a team of young players but a lot of young players out there for Kelso today you know the the test and depths come a little bit quicker than I anticipated which is which isn't great but at the same time it just gets these guys up and running quicker and you know we, we had planned for it anyway so um, you know it so far, especially last week, some of them stood up really well against the Heriots. Um, so, yeah, this will be a, another step up, obviously, um, and what comes with it. You know, it's, there's a probably a, a bigger mental side of it this week for them uh, than there was playing at home to, to Heriots. So, we'll see how they cope, but again, we have got a mixture of the experience. You know, obvious people in there, like like Bruce and Grant, that can, that can uh, help these young lads. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how they go. So we've got some good young talent. We've talked about that, Neil, coming through in Kelso. OK, it might be early for them. We're coming into the Premiership with big test. Ashton Asante, big test for him today. 19-year-old uh, Ashton, he's come through really well from the Harlequins. And he's going in at tight head because, of course, Terry um, was uh, red-carded last week. And so, it's a, as you say, earlier than you expected. You and Thompson and Cammy Brown in the second row. So you and Thompson coming in, another youngster. I think you said to me five players in this that lineup that are between 18 and 19. Yeah. Um, and again, you've got Murray Woodcock in the back row, who's been really impressive. He's, he's a young lad, 
but he's looking like a good player. In the back, in the back, Nick Stingle in at scrum half this week. Uh, Murray Hasty, of course, as usual. Robbie Tweedy, Frankie Robson, Hamish Tweedy, Archie Barber, Dwayne Patterson. A lot of young boys in that back line. But what are you expecting from them today? I mean, and do you expect that you've, you've drawn both games so far? You've had two good performances. You were telling me you were disappointed not to beat Heriots last week. You were leading at half time. A lesson for them. But you've got five points. Hoyk have had one game. They've got four points. One win, sorry. They've got four points and one loss. So they're behind you at the moment. You expect these young boys to be able to take the game to them? Well, yeah, possibly. I think me and Bruce speak about it all the time, and sometimes our young guys just they're fearless, is how we describe it, and uh, they're not actually always aware of what's going on around about them. And it's sometimes a good thing. So, yeah, we 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 do expect them, and we're asking them to go and challenge themselves to to come here and no go into their shells. And this isn't, I mean, this isn't just young players in the team. This is the whole team. I mean, this team's never played at this level a special away to the Scottish champions you know we're talking 20 years so it's a new thing for the club but it's a new thing for this team but they've never failed us since uh, since Covid regarding effort uh, and me and Bruce can never complain about that uh, you know, all the other coaches so hopefully today we can put our best foot forward and see what happens Let, let's ask the question you like and see where we are you know this will be a tester as you say there's there's a few battles out there that are, are huge for some people like Ashton Asante, like Murray Woodcock, young James Glendinning who's obviously came to the gala ranks but he's only 18, he picked up a man in the match last week so it's it's interesting to see how he goes against a very experienced high back row. So. Great Neil, thanks for joining us before the game, I'll let you go down there and, and get back to your duties as director of uh, rugby with Kelso. We've got a very strong Kelso, uh, Hoyt team today looking forward to taking on Kelso. Of course they want to get themselves back to winning ways after losing to Mar under their captain Sean Muir and they're running through drills with a lot of ferocity in the pre-match Stuart. So if that's any indication of what to expect I think we're going to get a cracking border derby here this afternoon. This is, this is Rugby Radio. Rugby Radio. It is indeed coming to you live from Philip Hawk. Selkirk against Jed Forrest is our featured commentary game this afternoon. That uh, kicks off at three o'clock. We're going to switch gear a wee bit right now and bring in Alan Lorimer, who's been uh, the number one reporter really for the schools game in Scotland for many, many years. And Alan, I, want, I wanted to ask you about the National Cup because uh, it's, it's got a bit of a new look this season, hasn't it? And it, it's um, a look that I think you approve of. Uh, yes, indeed, Stuart. It's, uh, it's changed from a straight, brutal knockout to uh, a group stage. There's uh, four groups of four in, in the cup, and that's replicated at, in the under-16s as well. And it's the same in the, in the lower competition as well. So it gives everyone a chance. And also, the, the, the big advantage of it is that um, you clubs in the top tier conference will play against uh, for example the all, all the border clubs so that that exposes uh, clubs and players to to something different outside the, the experience that they're having week to week i think that's, that's a very good thing um, and who knows that there are there may be some some upsets you know for example last week we saw Dunfermline getting very close to taking a scalp in GHA there was only four points in it at the end and uh, that's that's very good for Dunfermline it will certainly give them uh, a lot of encouragement uh, and, and we saw Gala having a big win last week as well Gala Wanderers um, and uh, I think I think that is the that's the kind of innovative uh, move that we want to hear about from Murrayfield. And of course, I was speaking to Ron Moffat oh, five or six years ago, I remember when uh, he, well, probably even longer actually, when he was at Dollar Academy and, and uh, the, they were playing the South Schools then and, and Rob was, was saying, look, you know, it's too insular in the borders, you know, that we keep playing each other, but we, we should be getting out and, and seeing what other opposition uh, c- can deliver for us. Yes, that's, that's perfectly correct. I totally agree with what, uh, with Rob's views. I think the the idea of running a, a South Schools was good, uh, and I think you know, we should have another crack at that, uh, whether it's schools or whether it's uh, you know, south, some South conglomerate. But we should we we've got to have players here finding out what the likes of Dollar Academy, Merkiston, Edinburgh Academy, you know what what their players are all about. the The problem is that. Um, uh, 
unless we can get a few fixtures for a, a south side uh, before they play these top teams, then um, it's, it's no use because what happened, if I recall, when they played dollar, south schools played dollar, they were absolutely hammered in the first half and then won the second half. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it can be difficult for them, but they must, I think players here must find out what's happening elsewhere and not only in terms of uh, the standards, but in terms of uh, what a lot of these private schools actually do to, to achieve this. Well, of course, I mean, we do want to see all the youngsters coming through uh, to become the stars of the future. That's all we want. Homegrown, we, we'd, we'd rather see Scottish people uh, playing in the jerseys rather than ones who have grandmothers who went to a shop in Glasgow once um, from South Africa. So, um, ideally, but what is the pathway like at the moment? I mean, it, can it be improved? I'm sure it can. Yes, um, is the short answer to improvement. The problem is that the private schools, five or six, in fact more than that, it's probably about eight <laughs> private schools, really work at rugby and you, you have to admire it in a way. <laughs> Perhaps you think it's, it's not fair and uh, they, they have a huge advantage but they really work at rugby. Merkiston, for example, are getting coaching seven days a week. It's run as a mini professional outfit. They have a dedicated strength and conditioning coach at Merkiston. Now, this is a school with a dedicated strength and conditioning coach. It's, it's, it's almost unbelievable. They're training every, every day. They're also training in daylight, which I think makes a huge difference. The problem with, um, for example, the, all the, the semi-junior clubs here I'm talking about sort of 15, 16, 18 um, age groups. The, the problem is that they have to come along at night. Now, the problem's there. That parents have got to agree to shuttle them to training. Um, and because uh, they have to travel a certain distance, the actual training can, can be comparatively short. And then they've got to get back again. And problems occur... Uh, you know, not only in the borders, but especially in, in cities where parents are a bit anxious once the clocks change. So everything's done in total darkness and, and they're not keen on letting their youngsters out um, at, at night. It may sound a bit fantastic, but I've heard from so many coaches that when the clocks change, they lose players. And that's, that's one of the main problems. So yes, Stuart, of course, improvements could be made, but how do you do it? How do you... How do you persuade clubs, junior clubs, to train three times a week, to train longer. Very difficult. It is indeed. Well, thanks, Alan, for joining us. Before we concentrate on Selkirk versus Jed, let's quickly look at the West Coast derby between Glasgow Hawks and Marr in the Premiership. Marr won against Hoyt last week. Hawks got their first win of the season at home to Selkirk. So let's hear from Marr's head coach, Kenny Diffenthal, and first Hawks man in charge, and that's Andy Hill. We're well aware of the task that faces us, and we know it'll be a real physical contest, and it's going to be so important that those opportunities when they do come our way on Saturday, that we go away and take them. But this is the chance for us to go away and get back-to-back -back wins, which is always really, really difficult in this league. And that's been nothing evidence more than this weekend, whereby there's only you know Curry and Ackies out of last year's top four that still remain unbeaten. Uh, and it's just showing that you know MD can beat any of the on their day. So it's really important that we're at our best on Saturday, and as I'm sure Mar will be intending to be as well. So with that, we hope for a great occasion at Balgray. Our first two games contrasting, so different. Just glad that at the weekend there we got the reaction we had asked for through the week and played well against Hoik. Now um, prep this week is just focusing on another tough game away to Hawks. We're just focusing on that. Righting the wrongs from the weekend again, making sure we get those things nailed on and look forward to a big challenge against Hawks. And ho hopefully we come out um, on the right side again. As that tough game against Hoyke at the weekend uh, is all for nothing if we can't back it up this week. Kenny Diffenthal and before him it was Andy Hill. That's going to be a good battle. We'll be keeping an eye on that one as well. Should be a good game though and uh, we'll be uh, bringing you up to date with uh, that and all the other scores throughout the afternoon. OK, we're not far away from kick-off here at Philip Hoch. By the way, because of the refurbishing of the stand, no spectators are allowed in here today, but they've let Dale Clancy in. Uh, so if it does sound a wee bit quiet up here, that is the reason. And let's join our commentators for today, Scott Tomlinson. And first, a good afternoon to Dale Clancy. Hello, good afternoon everyone and welcome along to Philip Hawk again on Rugby Radio providing comprehensive coverage of Scottish club rugby all afternoon 
here live from the home of Selkirk Rugby and it's Jed Forrest who have been led onto the field by their captain Clark Skeldon and closely followed by Selkirk with their captain Scott McClymont leading them onto the field clapped on by all for m and a group of cyclists who have been travelling from Ipswich and are hoping to finish at Melrose but thought they'll stop off at Philippoch en route to the home of Doddy Weir obviously as well as uh, back in a charity for Ed Slater who's battling m and currently and obviously looking to try and make a lot of donations and fundraising attempts to try and support both causes and Doddy Weir's and Ed Slater's charity aiming to get £400,000 and I'm sure that peddling will help towards that but we also have an intriguing battle which awaits us as the ball is presented onto the field by that group all for MND and the fundraising links can be found if you search any search engine I'm not going to plug them all but any search engine I'm sure you'll find all for MND and the fundraising links will be available now obviously this is an intriguing game both teams locked at the bottom of the table yet to get off the board any sort of point Jed Forrest rooted to the bottom just snuck in behind Selkirk and we'll bring you the teams just as we get underway here at Philippoch bang on three o'clock and Gary Munro is the player waiting patiently to get play underway the referee Callum Worsley blasts the whistle and we are underway here at Philippoch as the ball is kicked just towards the 10 metre line it's not went the full distance so it's going to start with a scrum put in to Selkirk who are going to line up with Luke Petty, Fraser Eason and Jake Milburn who's making his first start in the front row, Connor Ward and Andrew Cochran in the second row with a back row of Donald Nichols, Scott McClymont and Andrew McComb in the backs, Aaron McComb and Cam Eason are the halfbacks, Josh Welsh and Finlay Whelan's on the wings with Nixon and Grant Sooty in the centres with Callum Anderson at full back the Jed team, Ryan Briggs, Jimmy Ferguson and Harry Meadows in the front row with Captain Clark Skeldon packing down alongside Ben Howe with Wardrop Howe and Jack Howe that is and Blake Roth in the back row. Bambrick and Monroe halfbacks with Shearer Gibbon Elder on the wings. Cranston and Walker in the centres with Mark Glenn the youngster in at fullback for Jed Forrest. It's a strong scrum there from Selkirk a minute into this game and they managed to match, march back the visitors from Riverside Park. They win the penalty and it's been a uh, a bit of a ropey start for Jed Forrest, Scott Tomlinson, who's uh, joining me on commentary this afternoon. And it's allowed Selkirk an early opportunity to put a bit of pressure on the visitors. Yeah, a poor kick-off by Gary Munro. And then it came to a scrum in the middle of the park there. And, and already Petty's put up Briggs, his opposite number, under huge pressure in the scrum. And obviously, you know, Paulo, Paulo Ferreira must have uh, called off last night. And that's going to be a big miss for Jed in the Jed Park. Who, who, let's be honest here, the battle's going to be up front. Who's got to get parity within this game? Fraser Eason to throw into the line -out. First time starting in the first team alongside his brother Cameron Eason. And uh, they'll be hoping to try and cement their jerseys here as he finds his target. He packs down at the back of that driving mall. Tries to nudge his shoulders in a little bit. But Blake Roth is just swimming through trying to put a bit of pressure on the Selkirk hooker. It starts to splinter slightly but Fraser Eason still has the ball in hand. Now McComb finds Petty, just a little bit wider, looking to try and exploit that 10 channel. Makes some inroads, it's been picked up by Scott McClymont, who makes a couple of yards, but has been dragged to ground by Jed Forrest. Into the hands now of Nixon, out to Cameron Eason, wrapping round the back, who brings Callum Anderson into play. He's looking to try and go round the long way. He's almost bundled his way over the try line, and he does just that, and it's a brilliant, blistering start from Selkirk. And they score through their fullback Cal uh, Callum Anderson. He had a player outside him, but opted to go alone. And he gets the first score, and that's as easy as you like off, uh, off the line out. Yeah, it was almost too easy, wasn't it, from a Jed point of view? But good, strong running by, by Callum Anderson there on the, on the field. He broke a couple of tackles and scored in the corner. But a great start for Selkirk. And we heard before in the, in the, the, the build up to the game about taking the, uh, you know, taking the edge off of this derby, but, you know. Selkirk have come out really composed and, and Jed Forrest on these, you know, it's opening three minutes but they've got a little bit of jitters in there, missing a couple of tackles but also missing a couple of, you know, pinpoint kickoffs and scrums. Yeah, we're two minutes into the game, you could almost say there's four mistakes made there by the Jed, by the Jed team, you know, so there'll be, there'll be some strong ones under the post there and, and regroup and restart again. Conversion attempt out wide, that's going to be Cameron... Eason to attempt this, 11 points so far in the Premiership, all of it uh, coming the, the previous two games, he started both of them, he's uh, not successful with that attempt to add to his, his try and three conversions that he's got so far in this Premiership campaign, and sees him 10th in the, the point scoring tally, 
He's not able to add a couple of points to that, the young fly half. Obviously filling the void left by Craig Jackson from Philip Hawk, now playing for Stirling Wolves. It's a restart from Gary Monroe. It's high, it's hoisted. It's been just fallen into the hands of the Jed two, Forest two, two. forwards there. Yeah. And now a carry from Dan Wardrop going round the corner and arcing his run, trying to bring the defence out of line to create these gaps. And Jed Forrest are a little bit more accurate now as they enjoy a little bit of time with the ball in hand. And Bambrick feeds Howe. Jack Howe carries forward towards the 22 now. Centre field and a bit of travel there from Bambrick and it's now into the hands of Monroe. He floats the ball over the top and it's been well gathered on the far side by Elder. He floats the ball back inside. Again, Jed Forrest just knocking at the 22, not able to really encroach it as Donald Nicholl has to go low to make a good challenge on it. The on-rushing forwards from Jed Forrest. Monroe out the back now. He floats a beautiful pass into the hands of Jack Howe, who's carrying yet again. Bambrick gets there from Monroe. He's going to put the boot to ball. He stabs it over the top, but Josh Welsh is there. And he's been bear-hugged there by uh, Robbie Shearer-Gibb, who was fighting for the ball in the air, but just not able to contest that well enough to dislodge it from Welsh's arms. Tipped on there to McClymont, who's tasked with just setting up the platform as the uh, Jed Forrest bodies get bundled out of the way when they try and fight on the floor for that ball. A little bit calmer and steadier now as Aaron McComb now sizes up a box kick downfield. He's looking to turn Gary Monroe, and that's a brilliant bit of skill there from the fly half. Keeping it in the field to play, but hoisting it through his legs at the same time. Excellent from the fly half, and the bouncing ball almost catches Cameron Eason One. out cold. But Luke Petty has uh, been penalised there for always being in front of the kicker. That was an amazing piece of skill there by Gary Monroe, wasn't brilliant. it? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I think we've spoken off air about you know, the skills and the qualities that he has, and that is uh, perhaps the, the, the best of Gary Monroe that we've seen there. Great awareness, pitch awareness as well. Yeah. And it's now his chance to kick it out for a penalty. And that's been a good set by Jed. A really good attack set, you know, keeping the multi phases, keeping the ball going. Um, Young Howe just got a loud one just now on the shoulder there. Um, he's a really big hitter. I, l I liked when I coached at Jed here. He was a really good player. His dad, obviously, ex ex hoik Jamie Ferguson now to throw into the line out. Jed Forrest, uh, eight metres shy of the Selkirk line, and taking his time to line it up and get his arrows straight. And it was almost flat back by Selkirk there. And the, the ball has gone loose in the referee. And it was just uh, signalled that Scott McClymont was. Uh, infringing at that line out so the free kick is going to go the way of Jed Forrest and this is going to be an interesting decision based on their earlier scrum it's looking like they're going to tap and go the, the hand hoisted from Bambrick the forwards flood round the right hand side and Blake Roth carries forward towards the uprights he's been dragged to ground a couple of metres shy as Bambrick now crouches towards the ball and feeds the on rushing Ben Howe and they pick round the corner and go again. Jed Forrest a lot more composed, putting pressure on the hosts here as Roth carries and he's almost dragged back there by Fraser Eason. Good defence from the hooker in close quarters, sh a couple of metres shy of the line. And now Jed Forrest go again, look to try and sneak their way over the whitewash and they get the ball back on their side. The Selkirk defenders having to get round the corner but Jed Forrest are able just to sneak under there and get the score. And it looks like it has been the replacement, Elliot Lauder, to get the score. And that's an immediate that's impact there a, from a That's a very good set. You know, it's, and again, Circuit made three or four mistakes, just like the, the first try where Jed made the mistakes. But what a, what a difference there, keeping the ball, asking questions of the Circuit defence. And to be honest with you, the Circuit defence was looking strong. But um, good carries be rough, good carries be loader, and we've got a score under the post. Well done, Jed. Well set from both sides. You know, you talk about the attacking composure there from, the, the, from Jed Forrest going round the corners. Defensively, as Gary Monroe adds the extras, you know, defensively, Selkirk really set round the corners. Jed Forrest set coming round, and it was just a matter of who was going to show enough want and enough strength. To be fair for Selkirk, we, we looked really strong in defence, but possibly didn't get off the line. So we always look at that 50%, try and win that space. And there was almost an example there where, where Selkirk didn't get off the line and let Jed dictate the carry. But a good start of rugby, though. Yeah, we were, um, we were debating whether this was going to be a war of attrition or a free-flowing game of rugby. And the opening eight minutes here at Philip Hawk have signalled that it's going to be fast-paced here. At the bottom of the Premiership is Aaron, Monroe, uh, Aaron McComb sorry, uh, just lumps it straight downfield. That would be some player if Gary Monroe was merged with Aaron McComb. But it's, uh, it's a Selkirk scrum half who took the restart and kicked it downfield. Jed Forrest return it and kick it out for a line out and you know this is an interesting game to call because then the opening two minutes it looked like Jed were a bit shaky but all of a sudden they get their character back and 
They looked really, really composed yeah, they, with the ball in hand. They looked organised, didn't they? They did. Gary, Gary Monroe ran the corner shots there. He's got good organisation skills outside him as well. We own Cranston and Lewis Walker there as well. So, no, I think this is... Uh, uh, thankfully, the crowd's starting to appear in as well, which is important. Well gathered there at the top of the line out. It looked like that was Andrew Cochran who, who gathered the ball. McComb now finds Petty. He carries forward. He bundles over a couple of, of the Jed Forest players as McComb now finds Eason and out the back is Whelans who's coming round. Anderson who was the opening try scorer here in this game carries forward but looks slightly isolated. Does well to fight to get that ball back as Donald Nickel now wearing number six on the, the back of his jersey carries yet again. Again looking to go acute and straight into the heart of the defence as Connor Ward now carries. He's got number five on his uh, back in the second row, partnering Cochrane now as uh, Ross Nixon thinks he spots a little bit of space in behind, stabs that kick uh, down and it's been charged. Bambrick looking to try and get the ball clear but it's now a fight on the floor inside the Jed Forest at 22 to get the ball back and it is Jed Forest who come up trumps and manage to escape their own 22. Dan Wardrop carries now into the hands of Jamie Ferguson who's taken the, the ball forward a little bit more and does well to evade the clutches of Luke Petty. Now Monroe sizing up his options, opts to just duck the shoulder and go alone and he's running a little bit of traffic, a little bit of trouble and the referee is saying this has been stolen by Selkirk and the penalty is going to go the way of the suitors. Yeah, it was an easy steal for Selkirk in the end for Scott McClymont. Gary Monroe was caught in two options, whether to clear his lines or whether to take that little gap there that just suddenly closed on him through McClymont and Petty. Um, yep, good play again by Selkirk though, keeping the ball keeping the phases of attack, mm -hmm. asking questions of the, or, or the Jed for his defence. Referee just having a conversation with the, the captain about what they're opting to do. So it is didn't give me anything, I'm happy with it. Okay. And just a conversation with Luke Petty about a, a high shot. Yeah, and as, long as, as long as you're getting low into it, you're doing everything you need to. Mm -hmm. I was actually really impressed just now by young Fergus in the Jed hooker. Yeah. Carrying that ball, good feet. Got the leg drive going beyond the tackle there. He was asking questions of that tackle there. Cameron Eason, centre field, just outside the 22, strokes it, and he's managed to split the kindling this time. He was unsuccessful with his earlier attempt, but now he's able to get Selkirk back in front. We have played 11 minutes here at Philip Hawk, and it is Selkirk back in front, eight points to seven. The lead, a reminder, there's a huge game in the Premiership as well at Mansfield Park, Hook versus Kelso, and we'll be bringing you updates on that, as well as the rest of the National League fixtures throughout the afternoon here on Rugby Radio. But it is Selkirk here in our featured game who have got a narrow lead. Eight points to seven, they lead in Ross Nixon. Just getting some running repairs with a nicely, a matching headband to his top. Just put round his, uh, his forehead, obviously, a little blow earlier on in the game. It means that Selkirk, for the, the meantime, are just going to be down to 14 players as Gary Monroe gets play back underway. A centre field kick, it's been gathered by Donald Nickel, who just jumped out from the 22 and now he's scampering his way over the halfway line back in field to Andrew McComb. He's been dragged down to ground by the covering Jed Forrest defence, but great break there from Donald Nickel. He's enjoying a, a longer spell in the first team after a, a little bit of time out. Now Cam Eason stabs it forward, thinks he sees a little bit of space in the Jed Forrest backfield and the wingers now chasing. And it's been cleared by Jed Forrest, and that is almost textbook from a side. If you score points, how to exit. You know, it's fortunate that the, the gap opened up there, but they've turned the tide, they've put the pe pressure back on Jed Forrest. Yeah, Ka Cam Eason showing um, old head and young shoulders, wasn't it? Definitely. Um, good catch by Donald Nicol and a good little break. Very well supported by um, Fraser Eason uh, as well at Hooker there, who's had a very good start to the game for someone that's um, only playing a handful of games for Circuit First at the moment. They spent his time playing hooker, but off the top, it's now into the hands of Nickel again, who's going to be an important ball carrier for the home side in this crunch game. We've built it up in different facets, in different ways at the beginning of this fixture. It is really important for both of these sides, but Selkirk at the moment camped inside the Jed Forest 22 again. Nickel carries, he goes towards the left-hand side, he's been met with two Jed defenders. He's in presented the ball back brilliantly as the ball is carried forward by Connor Ward the jackal there on for Jed Forrest looks accurate it looks good they win the penalty and it's great work off his, on his feet by Blake Roth yeah he's a good player Lady's he's really shown his, um, his presence in there at the moment in difficult situations where he decides whether he's going to jackal or whether he's got to stay out and, and put a hit in at that time there five metres from the circuit line was an excellent jackal and wins a turnover Monroe kicks it downfield he 
maybe not got a great connection with that, but he's uh, managed just to escape the 22 and take a little bit of pressure off Jed Forrest at the meantime because it's Selkirk currently just in the lead. They currently lead eight points to seven. Let's quickly uh, go to Mansfield Park. We've had uh, early scores. David Ferguson. Yes, we have indeed. At the moment, the score is Hoyk 14, Kelso 0 after 26 minutes played here at uh, Mansfield Park. The first two tries, in fact, Hoyk are on attack again, but we had a try after just uh, five minutes. It was converted by Kirk Ford, and the try was um, a cracking try, which came off a uh, um, mall. It was Fraser Rennick, the hooker, who went over. It was, as we talked about beforehand, the Hoyt Pack are really dominating this game. They're taking it to Kelso. The first try came off a line-out mall. It was hooker Fraser uh, Rennick, who eventually went over, converted by Kirk Ford after five minutes. And then, uh, despite a great try-saving tackle by James Glendinning on Andrew Mitchell, a few minutes later, um, Mitchell got through. It was a penalty given against for uh, Kelso for a high ball, being impeded when Kirk Ford went for a high ball. It kicked the corner, it came in. Instead of mauling it this time, Kelso did defend it really well, but Mitchell broke. He got through Charlie Marshall's tackle and he went in from about 20 metres out. A great run by the centre, Andrew Mitchell. So at the moment, we've got Hoyk um, dominating this game with, um, sorry, just 25 minutes to go in this first half, of course. Um, it's Hoyk 14, Kelso 0. David Ferguson at Mansfield Park. Glasgow Hawks 3, Mar 3 is the latest score. And it's Herrits Blues 5, Enbrackies 0, Musselburgh 0, Curry 5, and in National 1, Air 3, Dundee 0, Bigger 0, Melrose 7, and GHA 7, Highland 0. Play Croft breaking out of his own half now. It's well gathered in the backfield by Mark Glenn. He's been able to link up with Bambrick, who then found Roth. And now Jed Forrest looking to try and break free from inside their own half, but under a lot of pressure from the home side. It's been plucked again at the breakdown. Cochrane in there. There was uh, Harry Meadows as well. It's actually Ryan Briggs wearing number three who was uh, had his hands in there looking to try and get the ball back again for the Jed Forrest side. But now Cam Eason under a bit of pressure on his halfway line. He's been bundled back, but the Selkirk players getting back in abundance to support the youngster and get the ball firmly back in their hands as Finlay Whelans kicks downfield and now trying to make it a foot race Jed Forrest managing to get back there has been well gathered by Jed Forrest who perhaps were coming under a little bit of danger there and Lewis Walker then lumps it downfield it's been gathered by Callum Anderson on his own 10 metre line he slowly just sizes up his options he gets the pitching wedge out and just tries to loft it over the Jed Forrest defence not able to but it's came back on a, the Selkirk side it's a, a scrappy play there. It was, probably wasn't the best ex executed high up and under that you'll ever see, but it has come back on a Selkirk side as Eason now feeds Nixon. Nixon then just chips it over and asks Josh Welsh to try and chase this, and if this stays in, he could try and make this a foot race. Brilliant footwork to give it to Grant Sooty. He's not able to find his feet, and now it's a foot race to get the ball down, and can Grant Sooty get there? And if that is a score, that could be one of the most ingenious bits of play that you're going to see linking up between Josh Welsh, who just dribbled it back in field, and we'll hear what the referee's got to say. Well, he's, he's just went to his assistant referee pretty quickly and signalled the score, but it was great play. Just a couple of kicks in there from Nixon, one back in field from Welsh, but Sooty did well to keep his balance and dribble over the line. Yeah, it was great play by Ross Nixon as well. It obviously had the understanding to realise where the space was, a nice little chip over the top, and, and very clever play by Josh Welsh. Josh was a great standoff as well. You know, He's a good rugby player. Understand and realise, had awareness to realise that um, kick it across the park to Sati. And Sati had the, the speed to get there. I wouldn't like to have made that call if I was a referee, though. I wouldn't have liked to make that call. From where we were sitting, there was two Jed Forrest players who were charging back, and it looked like Sooty just got his uh, Grant Sooty just got his body underneath, which perhaps gave him the attacking I benefit th from yeah, the assistant he was, referees. He was almost chasing in the middle, wasn't he? He was in between the two players, so he had control of, of who was to win that foot race. The conversion attempt is successful there from Cameron Eason, who just uh, launches it with a low trajectory in between the uprights to add the two points and now takes it to Selkirk 15, Jed Forrest 7. And nothing in that, you know, there's a few phases there that could have went either way. Jed could have had a really good attack. Then it's Selkirk that got the turnover and made a difference there. There's nothing in this game, though. No, it was an aerial battle that perhaps at the time I was maybe a little bit uncomplimentary towards uh, Callum Anderson, but the, the kick has clear. ended up resulting in that score as the carry forward from Briggs from the kickoff. It was uh, spilled there by uh, Donald Nicholl who tried to rewind Back the clock and do exactly the same as he did earlier on in the game. Now Meadows trying to break free through the 
flailing arms of the Selkirk defence as Munro just spills the ball into the hands of Shearer Gibby goes one way then goes the other but he just ends up running straight into the arms of Josh Welsh who takes his opposite man down as Blake Roft now comes at the acute angle back towards the, the contact area looking to just suck in that Selkirk defence big carry again there from Again. Dan Come Wardrop, the referee, shot. signaling that there's a high tackle there, free ball to play with for Jed Forrest, can they get the ball through the hands, Glenn breaking free, and now he's oh. going to just hair his way and wheel his way towards the line and he's just dived over the whitewash, and it's an instant reply again for Jed Forrest, and the pendulum in this game is just swinging one way then the other, but the afterburners from the fullback was impressive there. Well, you've just seen Mark, Mark Glenn at his absolute best, you know, he, he let up the seventh circuit last year at under 18s, he's came up here a year early this year, so he's, you know, technically he's only 17, just turned 18, and he just came off that left foot there now, created the space and just flew through the gap. He is a dangerous young player and it's great to see. He just pinned back the lugs and then went for the line as he was uh, presented with the ball and then presented with the opportunity. And the youngster grasped it with both hands. And you have to say it was a rather really good piece of play with Jed. Composed. Creating the space, yeah, yeah. Two or three phases on the left and then out, go out wide on the right-hand side. Monroe with a conversion attempt just to the right-hand side of the uprights, uh, a couple of metres inside the 22. A quick sharp run up there, he launches it high and he's accurate with this one as well. So it's a full complement of seven points now and it makes it a one point game yet again. It's 15 points to 14, a 20 minutes played here and it's been a frenetic start to this game at Philippoch in the, the Premiership. You can see perhaps why both sides have uh, found it difficult in the opening stages of this campaign. Yeah. Defence is looking porous. And yeah, exactly. 20 minutes in already, you're seeing maybe three players on the circuit side and three players on the Jets side that are struggling with the pace of the game. So there's going to be tries, there's going to be openings there, holes and gaps are plenty, I would imagine, later on in the game. Lewis Walker gathered the kickoff from McComb and he's kicked it straight downfield into Cameron Eason. It's went in the hands of McComb and then Anderson, left footed kick, thinks he tries to turn the winger and that is a brilliant 50 22 from Selkirk as he just managed to loft the ball, the ball over Lewis Elder and he's not able to keep that ball in the field of play. It was a beautiful skill, wasn't it? It went end, end over end, knew exactly what he was looking to try and do, a very good skill set to be able to do that. And that's probably something that obviously Selkirk do benefit from. Anderson, McComb, and Eason, all good fly halves in their own right. You know, they've got that balance. All three were back there, they know where their kicking option is, they've yeah. got left foot, right footed kickers. Yes, exactly. Well gathered oh. at the top of that line out from McComb, it's been brought down. Fraser Eason, accurate again at the line out, his throwing has been going well. And he's one, secured that lead. ball. And Connor Ward then joins the, the body of that mall as it's now fed out to Ross Nixon to punch up. And he tips it on to Andrew G uh, Grant Suti. Not able to keep the ball in hand as Glenn breaks free from a couple of challenges from that knock on from the outside centre from Selkirk. And deep inside Jed Forrest territory as it's now fed back into Gary Monroe and he clears from his 22 downfield up towards that halfway line. It's not bounced out. Well, it has bounced out off the field of play. Callum Anderson was looking to take that quickly, but a great exit from Monroe. And that was an opportunity there. Great feet with Nixon. It had the sense to, to offload to Sutty and Sutty just dropped it. And a good tackle there by Lewis Walker. Prevented a certain try, I would say, under the post. Yeah, it was almost, I think Grant Suti was just caught a bit flat-footed, perhaps not expecting that gap to open up as much as it did. But this, will be the, this will be the first time this year that uh, Nixon has played alongside Sutty as well, so you know, Sutty wouldn't be expecting those clever offloads that Nixon can provide. I was almost going to say the same about the back division for Jed Forrest. It's been a few changes in it over the last few weeks, and these partnerships are really hard to, to get ticking early on. Is at the back of the line out, the overthrow there has been gathered by Elliot Lauder. And Jed Forrest now inside Selkirk's half are looking to try and build some momentum through Cranston. Feeds the ball and it's a beautiful ball into Robbie Sheena Gibb who's stolen a march on Josh Welsh. He offloads back inside to Cranston who gets it again and now looking to try and take the ball in the passage of play towards this Selkirk line. The loose bubbling ball has been Great, gathered and Aaron McComb was there defensively to try and sweep it up. Bambrick now finds Skeldon. Skeldon feeds the ball on to the on-rushing Dan Wardrop who did well just to break free and get his body over that gain line and again now Harry Meadows coming at pace Ball's available. tries to suck in that defence and Jed Forrest doing a good job in these danger areas to just oh, disjoint this defence as Roth offloads he manages to make that dog leg but Cameron Eason was offside in defence Clark Skeldon goes quickly he taps he goes and he goes over the line and Jed Forrest reclaim the, the lead here at Philip Hawk as they go in ahead 19 points to 15 now. 
a quick effect. Clark Skeldon taking a quick tap penalty and going there. And what I'm really impressed with just now is Bambridge's pass from nine to Gary Munro. It is a, a good 15, 20 metre pass every time and it's taking two or three defenders out of that circuit team and that's helping them generate some quick possession and start to attack phases and start to attack the branches of the tree. Great awareness from the captain from Jed Forrest. And I think if Jed want to play this fast, high-tempo game using Bambridge's pass and Gary Monroe's pass, then the, then the circuit players have got to need to roll away, and that's what Clark was at, getting One up there. Right. Can't suit you, looking to try and fight on the floor, but loses his foot in, and again, Jed Forrest, Justin, are winning that battle in the contact area with the ball in hand. Selkirk perhaps a little bit more inventive with their style of play early on, but physically, Jed Forrest are breaking free yet again through Jimmy Ferguson, the hooker. He looks to go over the top of... Adam McComb not able to, and the offload has just been knocked forward, but physically, Jed Forrest just look a notch above the, the home side. They do just now, they've got their danders up, haven't they? they've got a wee bit of confidence here. The Kev Barry coaching of, of the wider pass from the luck time, and then the two passes, the, the extra pass, that tip on pass is making a difference. Selkirk are looking for one-on-one -on -one tackles, and that just the extra pass, getting the, the shoulders they are starting to make a difference and Jed are getting a bit confident. Leader scores in the Premiership, Glasgow Hawks 10, Mars 6, Hoyk 28 now, Kelso 0, Heritz Blues 5, Edinburgh Ackies 5, Musselburgh 0, Curry 12 and here at uh, Philippot, Silkirk 15, Jed Forrest 21. Into National 1, Air 15, Dundee 7, Bigger 0, Melrose 17, GHA 12, Highland 7 and GHK 7, Gala 0. Put into the scrum there from Aaron McComb. And he does well to receive the ball back off Andrew McComb off the back of the line out, the back of the scrum, sorry, in the kick down field. And this could almost be another 50 22. The referees, I think, are happy with that, but great awareness from Aaron McComb. And that's exactly what we're seeing before about the kicking abilities of the Selkirk side, the personnel that they have, again, coming to the fore. Very clever skill set by, by Aaron, indeed, as it was with Callum Anderson before. And there's such huge win games, these. You know, to get a line out inside there, the Jed 22 there, and Come try on, and control this line out, and, and, and the forwards let them bust Jed. But Fraser Eason to throw into the line out. A bit of movement nine, there nine. as McComb flaps it back. It doesn't on. come back on the side of Roll the suitors back. because at the back of that line out, yet again, is Elliot Lauder who does well to gather it. And Backwards, then in open on. play, it's been a loose Selkirk arm tipped on. Scott McClymont eventually giving the ball to Josh Welsh. He's got some support back inside, not going to need it on this occasion. He drops the ball and looks to then just gather it up again by himself some time until the cavalry arrive and the Selkirk side eventually do arrive. And I think there's probably been a sore one in there as well for one of the Selkirk players at that breakdown. But Jed Forrest have been able to break free. They're looking to try and now get their platform set. It's uh, Andrew McComb who looks like he's taking a sore one on his uh, on his elbow. The kick downfield from Gary Monroe is uh, effective. It's good. Calum Anderson gathers. He takes it quickly and feeds Cameron Eason. But the referee is going to bring that back for the line out, believing it's been touched in the, the technical area there. It was changed a couple of years ago. Do not deliberately play balls that come near you. Like Greve getting a, yeah, a little bit of a, just about there. <laughs> a ticking off there. Yeah, it was always Jeeves. <laughs> Jeeves wanted give, to catch give, a ball. Give, he felt as if he wanted to be We're part of it. Didn't we'll it. give you numbers. A lot of mistakes in there, though. A few turnovers, backwards and forwards. Some tired players in amongst some very fit players in here. Yeah, 21 points to 15. The visitors currently lead, and it's another accurate line out. The line has been ticking for Selkirk so far as Nixon now looks for a shotgun straight up the middle. Well out, Blue. And does well centre field Take to present the ball back. And now the Callum Anderson just hoists it into the sky. And this is going to be a challenging one for Glenn to gather and he made it look oh so simple on his own 22 under a bit of pressure from the Selkirk players who were on rushing to put a little bit of pressure on the, the young fullback now Harry Meadows he carries forward back in towards the contact area but carries a couple of Selkirk players with him and that's been the, the story of this first half for Jed Forrest it's been taking two or three players to they bring them down 28 minutes gone here Selkirk 15 Jed Forrest 21 and out of their own 22 now the hand the ball getting through the hands of Clark Skeldon a little bit of gesture in there from Bambrick at the breakdown, trying to signal to the referee that he wasn't happy with something as Gary Monroe now puts it into the sky for Aaron McComb to test himself. And he makes it look equally as simple as now he offloads to Callum Anderson. Three players there. He managed to evade them all. Goes back in field. He's got Josh Welsh outside, but he's not going to use him. He's going to use Andrew McComb and he slides in for a score. And it was brilliantly worked there from Selkirk from deep inside their own half. 
Adam McComb gathering the ball, feeding it to Callum Anderson, and eventually Andrew McComb is the player to finish it off, and he shook off that elbow injury. He certainly has, and I think Callum Anderson uh, playing at the top of his game just now. I heard last week that he played really well, and he's already started this game in the first half really well. Good catch, good evasiveness, good strength, and then had the presence of mind to offload and score up a very good yeah, try for Selkin for Andrew dynamic. McComb. It's Aye. dynamic, he's got to make sure you're down. I'll watch what you mean. Aye. Brilliant play there from the home side. With the ball in hand, when you're playing expansively, Selkirk look like they've got the upper hand on their opponents. Physically, the Jed Forest look like they're winning the attritional battle. Yeah, and I would say the lineouts are probably Selkirk's strength and the scrums are Selkirk's strength, but Jed certainly at the moment are playing with a lot of, a lot of passion, a lot of um, sense, a lot of game awareness. Um, and uh, You know what? It's, it's two de very different teams, isn't it? Eason. It's like the younger of the two, Cameron Eason, to take the conversion attempt and he's just dragged that to the right-hand side of the uh, upright. He's not able to curl that one round as we see John Storey replacing the injured Ryan Briggs in the front row for Jed Forrest. He got injured in that last passage of play for the visitors. So we're going to be a replacement in the, the front row. And Selkirk will be receiving this kick-off and you think they've got 10 <laughs> minutes to play in this uh, first half. You wouldn't believe it, but it's uh, 20 points to 21. Yeah. It's, as, uh, it's as tight as you like, but it's been entertaining stuff it's so great, far. It's a great game. I'm just watching Clark Skelner now uh, speaking to his, uh, his pack again. He's really leading from the front today, which is great to see. He's super fit. He's all over the ball there just now as well. Donald Nicol again gathering the ball from the restart, and then Callum Anderson just hauking it downfield, and it's a, a great kick that's went deep inside the Jed Forest half, a couple of metres shy of the try line. And now the kick chase is on for Selkirk. Looking to put Glenn under a bit of pressure, but he does well to return from an acute angle and get it off the field of play. And Cameron Eason not opting to play it quickly either, and that's up to the 10 metre line. That's a brilliant exit. And I think, you know, Mark Glenn certainly had a, a, a brilliant start to this game for a youngster. He's oozing confidence. Yeah, I and mean, he's not particularly a fullback. You know, he's got all the skills. There's not a problem with playing in that position, but, you know, scrum half certainly outside centre is his normal position. Um, mightily impressed with Carl Anderson once again there. That was a, at least a 70, 75 metre kick across the park there. Um, clearly winning that, that space there at the moment. Again, another successful line out there from Fraser Eason. He hits the tail this time when it was Cochrane gathering. And then his second row partner, Connor Ward, is tasked with just trying to make some inroads upfield. Good support there from the Selkirk side as Luke Petty tips onto the most recent try scorer, Andrew McComb, and now he's up to the 22, and Selkirk champing at the bit to get another score here. Nickel tips onto Scott McClymont, the captain. He can't get the offload in. Well, he can, but it's eventually been gathered by Clark Skeldon, the referee coming back for the penalty, and Selkirk with their dander up Over at the here, moment. shoving through the ruck. You can hear the reason for that penalty, and that is uh, just five, six metres in from the right-hand side here at Philip Hawk, inside the 22, and I would imagine Adam McComb is just still going to try and nudge us into the corner, and they'll be looking to see the test of strength from the driving mall. Good, accurate kick there from Adam McComb. Now yeah. five metres shy, and Flew this is line. a pressure th uh, throw into the line-out for Fraser Eason. Yeah, but Fraser's done well, you know, that first half, I think every line is bang on the money. Um, and the circle definitely will be looking to, to, to do this driving line out and put Jed under pressure. Three tries apiece so far. The visitors leading by a point at Selkirk 20. Jed Forrest 21. Accurate line out to Donald Nicol. The bodies gathered round and it is opened up for Scott McClyman on the right hand side. Nobody defending that short side whatsoever. And the captain gets the bonus point try for the home side. It reclaims the lead for the suitors. And it is now Selkirk 25, Jed Forrest 21. Very good drive of Selkirk with Scott McClymont. They almost dummied that drive and line out, didn't they? Scott McClymont realised there was space down that blind side and took it very well. Almost too easy. Kev Barry and Neil Cook and Jeeves will be, will be concerned about that. There's just been a five minute spell where Jed have been yeah, under maybe. pressure and the defence has no held up solid. That is as big a blind side as you'll see. It was at the middle of the line out, so he did have about eight metres to play with on the blind side here. And he still had another player outside him, another Selkirk player that he could have tipped the ball on to. Fraser Eason was uh, loitering with intent, not needed. And the captain goes over for the bonus point score. So at least they've got one point in the league so far. They'll be happy with that. And Cameron Eason will be hoping to stretch the lead here. A similar kick to his last attempt. And this time... He gets it closer towards that right hand upright, but still the wrong side. 
as it's just dragged to the right hand side here as we um, just at the gate side we can see the all for M and D Ipswich cyclers coming into the ground. I'm sure they'll be enjoying a few light refreshments as well as they get here. One of the players, well, Freddie Burns, was a player who was joining them as well. The ex Leicester Tigers fly half. I do wonder if he'll be there because he's, uh, from what I can see in the social media, he's usually quite good with a beer in hand. So <laughs> he'll be good value down here at Philip Hawk and he'll be well joined by both these border sides after the game. But from the restart, Gary Monroe gives it to Ari McComb. Callum Anderson then again. That's another big kick, isn't it, Dale? Starting to see, we're starting to see a, a recognised situation here every time Callum's boot is certainly putting Selkirk in good positions. I really like Callum Anderson as a fullback. I do. I, I like him as a tent, but I like him as yeah. a fullback. I think, you know, it, just his kicking game can come into that first receiver role or out the back, yeah, take the pressure off and allow him, allow him to be an armchair kicker. He's a good athlete, Callum. Callum came through the, the kind of Hebs football system and then went... Went back into rugby at a later age, around about 17, 18 year old at Circuit Youth Club. Um, but what, what Callum gives to the club is his understanding, but also his professionalism and how he, how he was trained as a football player as well over the years. Um, Callum missed a good part of last year through injury, so it's great that he's back in here. And I've no doubt in my mind that um, somebody like Alan Tate, who's watching today, will be watching somebody like Callum for the future. A squint throw in to the line out there from uh, Jamie Ferguson. Not accurate there. He did have one overthrow earlier on, but he's had a solid start to this game as well. We're approaching half time shortly. We've got about five minutes or so left in this first half, and it has been frenetic, fast flowing, free rugby at Philip Hall. Quite a space to get your heads in. There's Which has now been slowed down by the referee because of the we're in this half. The re-engaged scrum. So the referee signalling that they are inside the Jed Forest half, aware yeah, so of the danger that the kicking option that Selkirk have, and we've not even mentioned Josh Welsh in that conversation. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. another good kicker on the, the right wing for Selkirk. Set! Scrum, competitive again. And Selkirk holding up strong and picked at the, the back from McComb. And then linked up there as Josh Welsh bursts off his wing. The floating pass is found by Callum Anderson, who just dinks it over the top. Looks to try and chase his own kick, hats it forward. He's now looking to try and beat Glenn on the turn, but he does well to gather the bouncing ball. And now he's trying to break free from his own 22. Not able to, as the circuit pressure in defence comes up pretty strong and relentless there as they look to try and protect this lead going into half time. Bambrick away into Ferguson. Ferguson, who was uh, perhaps guilty of that squint line out before, which allowed Selkirk that platform to attack from, trying to do everything to get his team further down the pitch as Harry Meadows now carries. Skeldon with a hand up, waiting for the ball. He's got Roth outside. I'm not going to use him this time. He just carries himself forward, dips the shoulder, and presents the ball back for Bambrick to give it to Monroe, yeah, who please. hoists it into the sky. This is going to be a challenging one for both wingers to gather, Great but catch. Finlay Whelans does perfectly off of his wing there. A nice pirouette as well, out of contact to gather the ball. And now Selkirk have it back. A carry through Jake Milburn, making his first start for Selkirk. And now McComb finds McClyman. Anderson throwing the ball to Nixon, he straightens up the line, he gives it to Andrew McComb now, he carries it forward and then gives it to Josh Welsh, he tries to evade the first challenge, a one-handed offload to Aaron McComb and he goes over the line for a score, and Selkirk extend their lead now, 30 points to 21, and that turnover was important, that kick in, the, the catch in the air from Finlay Whelan's allowed that platform for Selkirk to attack from, and that's yeah. as, as lovely and, a try as you're going to see. And the understanding to realise that there was, there was space out wide there and to try and get out the back door. Some lovely hands with Andrew McComb there. A beautiful offload by Josh Welsh there, just on the on the touchline side to bring it back into Aaron McComb to score. Lovely play, back to what Selkirk was like maybe two or three seasons ago, we were playing that fluent rugby, understanding where the space was and, and attacking it well. 51 points so far in the, uh, the first half. I'm, I'm we'll looking forward to half time. You know, I mean, we might get a little break, we might get a refreshment, but we've still got a bit of time to play here at Philip Hawk. I almost feel as if we've had two games already, hasn't it? It's been a long first half, but it's been an entertaining yeah. first half as Cameron Eason is just lining up his uh, conversion attempt a bit further out this time. And odds on, this will be the one that he'll nudge over the uprights. Good connection. It is uh, accurate. Has it got the distance? It has. It's a brilliant conversion attempt from the Cameron Eason. And he stretches the lead now. It's an 11-point advantage for Selkirk. 32 points to 21 they lead. And you're now seeing a Selkirk buoyant bench with the coaches pleased with how they performed in the first half. And a frustrated bench from the Jed. 
Forest side, you know, it, they've just slipped off that that pace in the last maybe 15 minutes and suddenly the scores got away from them. They're two teams that are uh, clashing on the field in terms of styles, but obviously physicality as well as Eason gathers from the restart. Jed Forrest opting to go to the right-hand side this time. It's then been given to Callum Anderson, who just batters it downfield. It's not been able to be kept in there by Lewis Elder, who I think has tried to gather the ball, and then he's just encroached on the touchline. So it's going to be a, a throw into the line out, perhaps, to Selkirk, because the change of arms from the assistant referee has signal, and that's a, another great exit from Yeah, Callum it's another 60-metre 60 60 metre clearance, you know, and putting, the, putting back, putting that Jed Forrest team under pressure again. This would be a huge turn in the game. We've got about a minute or so left in this first half. If Selkirk were to get any sort of points, you know, be it a try or a, a penalty, you know, you would imagine that's going to be a body blow for Jed Forrest, who have battled hard in this first half. At the line out, it's uh, not not accurate this time for Fraser Eason. The hooker not able to find his target. The turnover has went the way of six, Selkirk though, from six. that breakdown. Andrew McComb acting as auxiliary scrum half. He's been omnipresent in this first half. He's been uh, brilliant at the base of that scrum. And also in the loose as Cochrane goes round and finds Andrew McComb. Again carrying, obviously got representative honours with the South at the tail end of last season. And deservedly so. Donald Nicol now carrying forward. Aaron McComb sizing up the box kick. It's a low one. It's a testing one for Glenn. He's going to watch this one and bubble out off the field of play. And the referee has a quick glance at his baby G watch and says that the first half is finally at an end and we can take a little bit of a breather. But Scott, first, just a quick word. It's been a, it's been a frenetic and relentless first half, well, hasn't it? You know, Aaron McComb took that decision to kick it out there because I think he was absolutely shattered with the pace of the, the game. And you could just see that. Jed, Jed just fell off it in the last maybe five, five to ten minutes and that's been the difference of the two teams I thought Jed's been outstanding in that first half early doors keeping possession attacking their line giving that extra tip pass on uh, but the Selkirk's class is, has actually shown up in the back division recognised when there's been times where they clear their lines and clear their lines with, with 60 70 metre kicks with, through Carl Anderson who's been excellent this afternoon already so no I, um, I still think there's a few points in there to, in the second half so it'll be good fun it's been a, a brilliant first half here at Philip Hawk it has been Tries galore, it's five tries to the home side, three tries to the visitors and it means at half time here in the basement battle in the Premiership on game week three it is Selkirk 32, Jed Forrest 21. Dale Clancy and Scott Tomlinson out of breath after that. Who said border derbies were low scoring dirgy affairs? Not today and at Mansfield Park as well uh, we can rejoin David Ferguson. It's 28 points to seven I believe is the last I heard. The last you heard, it has changed, Stuart. It is now Hoyk 33, Kelso 7. Kelso did come back with a try there after the early tries for um, Kel for Hoyk, where we had Fraser Rennick, Andrew Mitchell, Sean Muir and Kirk Ford all touching down. Fullback Ford has been faultless with the boot. He's just lining up a conversion at the moment, right at the death. We're into injury time in his first half. Kelso looked like they were coming back. They've had some reward for their endeavour in the first half. They've worked very hard in defence. Um, there could have been more tries for Hoyt, but Hoyt, uh, Kelso have really fought hard to protect their line. But Ford is lining up his conversion. He takes it now. It's Exocet type kick goes very straight, but it just goes past the post just after saying faultless kicking. But that's been five tries from Hoyt, four in the first 23 minutes. Kelso have come back in the second quarter really there and showed their mettle we've got a try from Bruce McNeil of course the former Hoyk uh, skipper showed Kelso the way and got a try there for Kelso to get them on the board converted by Dwayne Patterson Hoyk who go into the break leading by 33 points to 7. So David a bit of a backlash yeah, I think you, we probably expected that, didn't we, Hoyk, losing to Mar last week, back here at home in front of their own crowd, quite a good crowd here at Mansfield Park this afternoon, good conditions, and they didn't take long, the famous green machine, you know, they didn't take long to get into their top gear, we knew their pack was going to take on Kelso. Kelso, as we heard earlier before the game from Neil Hennigan, have five boys in their team today that are aged just 18, 19. A bit indicative of the challenges they've got. They also lost their centre, um, Hamish Tweedy, in the first half to injury, and he was replaced by another youngster, James Thompson, who's on for his senior debut this afternoon. So that's a bit of a, an, an indication as to the, the difference between the teams today. There is an element of men and boys. Hoyk, when they have got rolling, their, their pack are very powerful. They're very strong in the scrum. They've been taking Kelso backwards and they've been very good in the line-out malls as well. But then when they've moved the ball, they've got guys coming on to the ball at pace and they've managed to score tries. Andrew Mitchell particularly very impressive in the back line. So 
all over the park. They are really taking the game to Kelso. Kelso are having to work very hard to keep their, themselves in the game and to, to get some ball. As I say, they did, they did show a good try by Bruce McNeil. Moments before that, it was unfortunate they were really close to scoring. They had a really good period of pressure on the Hoik, in the Hoik 22 going at the line. They lost the ball. It was turned over. There was a, de a debate about whether it was offside. Hoik player stepped in, took the ball and Hoik went the length of the field and scored. And you thought, what are Kyle's going to have to do today? Because they had good, that good pressure and that was them losing their fourth try. But as I say, Stuart, here at half-time, it's been five tries to Hoik. You, you don't see much change in this second half, but, you know, who knows? Let's see what Kelso have to offer in the second half against this machine, the green machine that has certainly found its feet here this afternoon. At half-time, it is Hoik 33, Kelso 7. David Ferguson at Mansfield Park this afternoon. A couple of border derbies. as a West Coast derby as well. Glasgow Hawks playing Mar and uh, Glasgow Hawks in front at the moment. 17 points to 14. Heriot's Blues in the Edinburgh derby. 14, Edinburgh Aki's 15, very tight there and then we've got Musselburgh nil Curry 17, Curry with three tries in the first half already and uh, if you've just joined us, half time here at Philip Hawk in the other border derby Selkirk 32, Jed Forest 21, both teams uh, in ninth and 10th spot at the moment so we're desperate for a win, we're certainly getting our money's worth here today and I'm sure that's going to continue later on in the second half. Into National 1 latest scores that we have, Air 20 Dundee 7, that one's certainly going to form. This one's an interesting one though, Bigger nil, Melrose 24, Bigger without a win uh, so far in their first couple of matches, they, uh, they lost just at the death on both of them ended up with a couple of uh, bonus points in each, so they're on uh, four points at the moment in eighth place, Melrose in third and uh, Melrose comfortably leading that 24 points to nil at the moment. GHA 33 Highland 7, Highland of course unbeaten at the moment so um, that's a bit of a turn up GHA losing to Gala last week and then we've got GHK who lost by 68 points was it uh, to Melrose last week with Gala beating GHA well now it's all turned round again because GHK are leading Gala by 17 points to 7 we're still waiting uh, for news from Watsonians against Glasgow Ackies into Division 2 at Scremerston it's Berwick 14, Falkirk 38. I thought that uh, Falkirk were going to not struggle to win, but certainly struggle to, to get um, points. It's a very hard place to go. It's Scremerston. Obviously, Falkirk doing very well, scoring 38 first-half points at Scremerston. That is a big turn-up for the books at the moment. 14 to Berwick, 38 to Falkirk in National 2 into National 3, Carthag Queen's Park who are bottom of the table at the moment 17, Hillhead Jordan Hill 19, Dumfries 17, Hamilton 14 and West of Scotland 5 Buttermere 17 is a half time scoreline at the moment This is, this is Rugby, Radio. Rugby Radio Borders Water Borders Barley and Borders People, that's what makes the Borders Distillery, working exclusively with local farmers, the Borders Borders Distillery is bringing whiskey making back to the region. Our award-winning distillery is open to everyone, where you can meet the people behind the scenes, explore our wash house and shop quality local products. Tour your local distillery and discover the spirit of the Borders. Full details at thebordersdistillery.com Always enjoy our spirit responsibly. Under 18s must be accompanied by an adult when visiting the Borders Distillery. Based in Gallish Hills, but covering the whole region and beyond, Borders Mortgage Hub is your one-stop shop for all things mortgage-related in the Borders. Visit us at bordersmortgagehub.com or call us on 01896 807 008. That's 01896 807 008. Borders Mortgage Hub. Mortgages for the Borders in the Borders. When the weather's dreech and a storm's a brewing, you need a strong, windproof, quality umbrella delivered with good old-fashioned customer service and at an affordable price. Up here in Umbrella Heaven, we say you tackle the ball, we'll tackle the weather. Umbrellaheaven.com for when the heavens open. This is, this is Rugby Radio. Rugby Radio. 
Yes, Philip Hall is the place. Selkirk just coming back out onto the pitch. They'll be followed by Jed Forrest very, very shortly. It's uh, some scoreline at the moment here at Philip Hall at the halfway point. Selkirk 32, Jed Forrest 21. So uh, the try bonus certainly in the bag for Selkirk, but uh, I have a funny feeling we're going to get a few more points in this one. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if both teams go over 50 points. Let's rejoin our commentary team, which is uh, Scott Tomlinson and first of all, Dale Clancy. Welcome back to Philip Hawk for the second half here in the Premiership with Selkirk currently sitting ninth in the division with Jed Forrest rooted to the bottom of the table in 10th. Two games gone, both sides yet to get off the scoreboard. But Selkirk have got that one point firmly in the bag and it's just going to be 40 minutes to see how many more points he can accumulate and if Jed can get some of their own because Aaron McComb has got play back underway, kicks it downfield towards the Jed Forrest. 22 has been returned back to Calm Anderson, lets it bubble off his chest and gracefully back into his hands. He hoists it into the sky. It is just shy of the 22. It's went over the shoulder of Gary Monroe, who looked to try and gather the ball from the sky and now into the hands of Glenn. He kicks downfield and waiting there is Finlay Whelans, but it's just went over his head. And it's um, again been a, a, an interesting start. I've never seen that before where chest the ball down. I would have thought, and I'm a referee, but I would have thought that would be a knock on, but I might be wrong. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be going back home to have a look at that one just now. Yeah, you did say it was his skill. football in days, you know. I, I, you probably oh. don't see many Hibs players uh, doing that actually nowadays. So if I don't it know bounced off the chest, I would expect there'd be a knock on. But hey, fair play. Play it, on. It's going to be a throw into the line out. It's been brought back. So Selkirk are going to start this second half. 55 seconds in with a throw in to the line out in a Jed Forest 22. Two quick fire scores at the end of that half. It's not found its man there, but Luke Petty has been able to just retrieve the ball as it fell from the sky off the hands of Blade Roth. And now McClymont, he tips on to Cochrane. Cochrane carries forward, supported by McClymont as McComb feeds to Nixon. Nixon tips on to Grant Sooty. He's already got a try in this game as well. As McComb and Aaron McComb now finds Anderson, he clips his heels and looks to try and go round the outside of the defence, but has been well marshalled. That steals good. 13 year old ride and a high tackle. So a couple of penalties there for Jed Forrest, and it's going to be Selkirk who benefit. And I think Aaron McComb is probably just going to nudge us in the corner. Yep, yeah, no, a good good start for Selkirk. Um, good early line out, a couple of phases of play and a couple of extra tip passes there. Just moving that point of contact and, um, and a five metre line out for, for Selkirk. It's going to be a throw in five metres from the line. Fraser Eason, who had a good accuracy rate in the first half, has uh, again found his uh, target in the line out. It's unorthodox, but it's been flat back and Selkirk have gathered. They've then camped down just outside the five metre line and tipped it on to Donald Nickel. He burrows his way forward and then Army crawls a couple of yards more just to try and steal some territory there for the home side. Now Cochrane, he carries, he presents. Selkirk get round the corner, look to get that ball back and protect it and put some pressure on the visitors, over. but it's been turned over by Jed Forrest. They now look to try and break free from deep inside their own half, but again engulfed by Selkirk arms as they try to get away from that breakdown. Monroe manages to feed the ball on to Hind. It's Lauder actually who managed to gather that ball and just catapult himself forward through the defensive line. Box kick downfield has been gathered by Cam Eason. Cam Eason then feeds Callum Anderson. Has been signalled with the spaces from the Selkirk technical area. Not using it now because Anderson is arcing his run and then trying to find Finlay Whelans. He looks to try and break free, but Scott Murdoch, one of the replacements on the wing for Jed Forrest, making his Premiership debut, does a brilliant first uh, effort in this game as he's able to haul down the winger eight, eight, eight. as he charged towards the try still line. In, still in. Finlay Whelan now has to act as uh, scrum half. Connor Ward. Ruck. Robotically gets the ball through his arms and finds his target as Fraser Eason looks oh, to enough, take carry the ball forward and out the back door, finds Finlay Whelans and links up well. And there's a try there from Selkirk and it's brilliant skill. Yeah, really good skill by Fraser Eason. Uh, hat off to him. He took the ball into contact really well, understood he wanted to get that offload there. Beautiful reverse pass into Whelans' hands and he's in the corner. Very happy young laddie. It was Finlay Whelans who managed to hold his width initially on that build-up of play. Anderson found him, but it was a great challenge from Scott Murdoch. But Selkirk kept being persistent with the ball in hand. Got around the corner a couple of times and eventually that carry from Eason, who's uh, put on a bit of bulk over the summer to accommodate his new change in position, 
used to be an inside centre. Now they've just dropped a one from his shirt and put a two on the back because he's uh, performing at a high, high level at, at Hooker for Selkirk at the moment. It's now up to his uh, younger brother to try and add the two points. Left-hand side of the pitch, right-footed. And the conversion attempt is accurate. And it's through the uprights there to add to the try from Finlay Whelans. And it's and a great start to the second half for Celtic. Yeah, and, and Jed done really well to that defensive set and a clearer line, clear their lines. But where, where they need to be careful is if they give Callum Manor some free ball like that arc and run that he just done, and don't put pressure on that player there. They're, 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 they're going to be in for a tough second half. Celtic are able to stretch their lead now. 18 points they have as a, a comfortable cushion, but the way that the first half went, it was uh, topsy turvy to say the least. It's been flat back and Connor Ward was there. But it's knocked on from a Selkirk hand. The call for offside, and I would tend to agree with them, but the referee hopefully <laughs> explained why that wasn't. But uh, Connor Ward was just in front of the ball, knocked forward, and he was there. But it's going to be a put into this company, Jed Forrest. Not a ruck, I think, would be the decision there, which is why he wasn't offside, it was just from an open play kick. Well explained there, Scott Tomlinson. That's why you're here. I'm clutching at straws. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, think that, I think that's what we're saying. What we don't know, we'll make up here on Rugby Radio. <laughs> uh, it's a scrum put in Blind. for Jed Forrest. A good, a good attacking option for Jed here. Selkirk, 10 metre line. It's been Roth who picks and links up with Cranston. He manages to make some good inroads. He's a, a, a bulky inside centre. Maybe a bit more of a throwback to the... The older days when you just had a ball carry in 12, but back inside Monroe finds Shearer Gibb, who's working hard off his wing, presents it back in Bambrick, then feeds Skeldon. In the second row, looking to try and get that ball free from his clutches, but just not able to find his target. Roth has uh, got Fraser Eason for some company, but now Monroe looks to feed the seed a bit wider there and stretch the Selkirk defence, and Cranston breaks free. And now on that far side, Jed Forrest looked to try and stretch the Selkirk defence, but just been bundled into touch. And yeah. the opportunity now passes him by, but good attacking build-up. Yeah, really good play by Jed there. And try save a tackle by Aaron McComb there in the corner on Lewis Walker. But good play, good strength by... Uh, Cranston in the, in the centre there to get beyond the player and then good phases of play and, and it just shows you it's almost too easy at times for both both sets of players in attack and the defence is just a wee bit weak at times for both sets of players today. Eason a few metres shy of his own line got thrown at the line out, he's uh, perhaps stepped a bit quickly but he's able to find somebody at the tail of the line out. I think that was Milburn but the referee has given the free kick for dummy throw so perhaps a little bit of pressure coming on there for the hooker and Jed Forrest get a free kick the five metres shy of the line. The carry forward there from the forwards, linking up well. And now another carry, a big a robust carry by Wardrop. Pugnacious character in the, the back row for Jed Forrest. They pick round the side, now they go left and look to bundle their bodies over the line. The momentum not able to get them over the whitewash, but they go again. They have another bite at the cake and they go, they're over the line. And it's a try for Jed Forrest. And they're able to punish the error at the line out for Selkirk. And they squeeze their way over the line and get Elliot Lauder again. Get the He's had an impressive introduction to this game. Has, I reckon it, Elliot Lauder would have played last night for the seconds as well. A really good performance by him. It narrows the margins and it means that if anybody thought that the second hand, uh, the second half was going to be a bit of a damp squid, then they're to be mistaken because we've already had a lightning start to the second half. Eight minutes gone and we've already got two tries. I'm and starting I to worry that Stuart Cameron thinks it is going to be 50 points apiece today. I don't think we'll cope with that. Don't you worry about that. After being starved of tries for many a week, we'll, we'll <laughs> lap this one up. So it was a great try by Elliot Lauder there. He done really well. Good forward pack. A quick free kick taken and another score under the post and Gary Monroe converted. There is an injury on the pitch at the moment, so uh, we'll have a quick look at the latest scores around the country. It's Glasgow Hawks 17, Mar 14, Hoyk 33, Kelso 7, Heriot's Blues 10, Edinburgh Ackies 15. There's a little bit of uh, conflicting uh, scorelines coming there at the moment we think it's Harry it's 10 uh, Embrack is 15 but we'll let you know uh, when we that get that uh, confirmed in a minute Musselburgh 7 Curry 17 um, Selkirk here of course at the moment at uh, Philip Hall the current scoreline is uh, Selkirk 
39, Jed Forrest 28. So I think that's Jed got the bonus point now as well, isn't it? That's a bonus point try. Bonus point, very good. Um, Air 29, Dundee 7, Bigger Nil, Melrose 24, GHA 33, Highland 7, GHK 17, Gala 7, into National 2, and it's Aberdeen 10, Las Wade 12, Berwick 21, Falkirk 38, Kirkcaldy 7, Newton Stewart 20 is a latest score and into a National 3, Carthur 17, Hillhead Jordan Hill 19, Dumfries 17, Hamilton 14 and West of Scotland 5, Boroughmuir 17. Time back on here at Philip Hawke and it's Aaron McComb getting play back underway, kicking towards the 22, gathered by Skeldon, he's been met by Petty in his uh, right shoulder and then he's been just uh, escorted towards the, the Philip Hawke turf by the clear out from Jed Forrest. Carry forward from Roth, the advantage coming for Jed. And the ball getting through the hands now again as Wardrop carries. He's been really industrious in that, with the ball in hand this afternoon. Roth now offloading to Ferguson. He pirouettes out of contact and it's been ripped back, but the referee is going to obviously signal for the penalty. Two high tackle up here. Fraser Eason guilty of uh, the infringement this time, just riding the challenge a little bit high and gives Jed Forrest the opportunity to kick downfield. Yeah, yeah, slowly but surely, Jed, Jed's getting back into this game. I was just, I was, I was literally just watching Clark Skeldon, who got held up on the line just pre, prior to Elliot Lord scoring the try, and he just took another dunt there by Petty, um, but and he was slow to get up. But he, I mean, he's a real five. strong character and a real leader Seven, within the team. Five, Jed, if Jed want to win this game of rugby, they'll be looking to try and keep Clark Skeldon on the field. Yeah, when you've, you've got Clark Skeldon missing players likes of uh, Gregor Law, who's obviously not donning the the Royal Blue shirt of uh, Jed Forrest so far. The replacement at Hooker as well for Selkirk. We're going to see James Beck come onto the pitch for Fraser Eason. Quick update for you from uh, Mansfield Park now. Hoyk 47, Kelso 7. Talk about a backlash. And there's been a further score at Scremerston. Berwick 21, Falkirk 41. Murdoch gathers in the backfield, finds Monroe. He then tries to kick crossfield high and angled towards uh, Callum Anderson. I can think of better places to aim it because he's just left a pocket of space in behind and he then turns Bambrick. Bambrick's coming to scamper back in towards his 22 to get the ball and then breaks three. He notices that it's Luke Petty in front of him, thinks he can beat him for footwork. He does just that but then tips it on and offloads to Wardrop and now it's a little bit more open as the replacement front row, John Storey, carries up towards the 10 metre line. Bambrick spots there's a little bit of an overlap here as Ferguson in there is just signalling for Scott Murdoch to come in but he looks to go around the outside of Callum Anderson but the young electrician from Jed Forrest is just escorted off the field to play by Callum Anderson yeah that was a huge tackle and I think he's injured he was carrying an injury when he had to make that tackle now so fair play to Callum just now I think he just tightened right up I'm just saying it's testament to the Jed Forrest team that we've not spoken about the young brothers pa Paulo Ferreira Rory Marshalls of the world and now that's testament to this team that's playing today as well you know, they're obviously missing a lot of really good, strong rugby player characters of that team. They definitely are. You know, I think that, that for me, the, the one ominous omission is the Gregor Law one. I think um, yeah. and Marshall as well. Um, I know what the youngs can do. They're, they're brilliant rugby players, but I think the players that are in there at the moment, the likes of Walker and Glenn, mm -hmm. Shira Gibb, Crack, they, they have been standout. They've been really, really yeah, effective in well. this game. So no, you know, no. I don't feel that, that they're as, as big a loss. You do feel like so the likes of... You know, martial arts is something different in Gregor Law as well, but obviously I mean, a lot of experience missing You can see the there's pitch. a change in the guard happening in both in circuit sides and the, and the Jed Forest sides today. Um, and, and that's what I'm saying, it's a great thing that we're not talking about those those sort of players, that we're talking about the players that are on the field on. and performing. Let it come, let it come in. Cochrane gathers from the line out. It's uh, not accurate there from Ferguson this time. The hooker for Jed Forrest, and it's then been clutched at by the second row for Selkirk who set the platform up for McComb to kick downfield Robbie Shearer Gibb a, a really hard working winger works hard to bring Glenn into play and then it's went to Murdoch now he's got Finlay Whelans he's got the ball tucked underneath his right arm he goes on the inside of him but then he's just been scragged as the Selkirk players just assemble en masse at that ruck just to clear the, the Jed Forest players out of the road, but the ball has come back. Harry Meadows now just offering his back up to the circuit defence to target, to make sure that the ball is well protected as Monroe floats the ball over the anchored circuit defence. Cameron Eason coming up at a bit of a dog leg to try and cut out that quick ball, but Skeldon now, and just wrapping round the corner. 
manages to link up with some teammates there. Story, one of them. Ferguson, the next, who's got the ball in hand. Jed Forrest having to retreat in territory, going more towards their halfway line. But Monroe now just uh, stabs it over the top. And Aaron McCombs there, ready and intent and willing to carry the ball forward back towards the halfway line. They've got the advantage coming for the high challenge as well as the, the ball has been gathered by Turnbull. It's not going to be a, a free ball though because they're going to come back for the penalty and again Monroe just spotting something different to try and chip it over and yeah. you know, put a bit of pressure on. No, no, it was, it was a clever play by Monroe but also clever play by Aaron McComb that recognised where that what, what this standoff was trying to do and he took it on the bounce really, really well and it was a good tackle by Blade Roth to, to prevent Selkirk ingressing any, far, any further. Aaron McComb, centre field, right footed kick downfield towards the 22. He exits that field of play, and the spectators on the bank can have to scarper somewhat prematurely to try and make sure that they evade the, the bouncing ball. But it's a safe ball off the field of play into touch for Selkirk, and they'll get the throw into the line out. And James Bett returning to Selkirk duties after some time with the Knights as well. We'll get his chance to throw into the line out, and I'll tell you what, like before the game, you would have, I would have been saying as well, James Bett's a assuring to get his place back any time soon, but Fraser Eason has had a, a brilliant 50 minutes, but at the tail, McClymont gathers and then hairs it towards the 22 metre line, and then Beck getting round the corner, carries yet again, obviously carrying a, a slight injury, but Eason, Cameron Eason links up with Andrew Grant Sooty, and now Anderson looks to try and offload, but he gathers, he carries forward, he's been met with a couple of Jed Forrest challenges, but not needing any support there, as Petty now carries, he then just barges his way forward, flops onto the ball, and then looks to present Missed it back. The, the referee clearly gesturing to Jed Forrest that they're not able to contest for that ball is Turnbull. And it's Callum Turnbull carrying forward. One of a, another set of brothers in the Selkirk side. As Anderson now goes towards that blind side, offers himself up by the referee, signalling that it's just been held up. It's going to go back for the penalty. And it's going to be an interesting call here from the home side as to what they do. Nine... 11 points they lead, there's my maths coming back into it, but 11 points they lead, and they've got a penalty attempt right in front of the uprights, Scott McClymont going to the referee, he's tapped it quickly and he's went it alone, there's absolutely no support there for the captain, but they then assemble and they gather round the ball carrier, they've set it up slowly, and the referee signal to Luke Petty where the ball is, they tip it on, and it's a carry and it's a first try for Jake Milburn, and his first start for Selkirk, means that he's got one try in the bag, and it means Selkirk. They took the gamble to go for the quick penalty, but it pays off it, for the suitors. Yeah, it's paid off for them. I'm, I'm mightily impressed with Jez's defensive display there, and then suddenly there's a one missed tackle, and it makes all the difference, which will be disappointing from the coaching staff. They are uh, really impressed with Selkirk's attacking display now. They're starting to find themselves in the middle of the field, and because you've got really good organisers within the back division, the Selkirk backs division, you can play off the right-hand side or you can play off the left-hand side with runners, and that's starting to pay dividends now there's starting to be a lot of spaces and uh, movement within the team conversion attempt now for Selkirk 44 points to 28 they lead, this would make it 46-28 and give them a, a handsome cushion again as we can see a couple of players on the Jed Forest bench readying themselves for action Eason starts his run up, a right footed kick and casually as you like straight through the middle of the uprights and it's now 46 points to 28, and Cam yeah. Eason as well at fly half, so a, a really impressive game. Yeah, both Eason brothers have played well, the parents will be fair, fair proud tonight. I, I would like to see some of the circuit younger players from, that are on the bench coming on now as well. I think it's been that type of game, it's 46-28, you'd like to think that circuit should be should be at home, home and dry now, uh, and it'd be a great opportunity to bring some of those, those younger players on as well. The Jed Forest bench has been emptied, so Michael Weekly, Story, Hind, Lauder and Murdoch all on the field of play. And Nickel again gathers from the restart. It's been uh, three or four Command times. Commanding role, isn't it, in there? They, but they put it down the same channel each time with uh, similar results bar once. Yeah. His Petty then tips onto the wing. Josh Welsh now looking to make inroads. He's been well marshalled on that bank inside here at Philip Hawk. Still relatively dry here after a relentless rain yesterday evening. Pitch holding up well here. And Aaron McComb can set up a box kick downfield. He's targeted a nice area of that pitch, which uh, Shearer Gibb has covered quite quickly as Selkirk looked to steal themselves a bit of territory on the ground. It's a great turnover there by James Good Beck. Day. As Eason has to play scrum half. And Donald Nicol was ducking low. Oh, I didn't like how that happened there. And Donald Nicol is now lying on the ground. 
he had to change his angle of run pretty quickly yeah. and he's clutching his left leg. He took a knock of the prior the prior contact he took a knock after that kickoff. And then he, he didn't look comfortable when he took that ball on there and I don't know whether he fell down a little hole or something, just I think it was his ankle. Shock horror, I just said that the pitch is holding up well and then there's uh, an injury about 10 seconds later. Uh, but Donald Nickel has uh, taken... What a shame, because he had a good game to this afternoon. He's having a really good game and obviously he's, he's struggled with injuries over the last uh, few seasons. He's a really impressive player, but there's going to be a little break in action here at Philippoch where we're just uh, seeing more cyclists arrive en masse for the All for M&D cause, which is supporting Doddy Weir's charity and Ed Slater's as well. Looking to cycle from Ipswich to Melrose, and they're stopping here at Philippoch en route for a couple of light refreshments. But I think we can perhaps go for a little update of other results around the country because here at Philip Hawk it's still currently Selkirk 46, Jed Forest 28. Yes, yeah, a good opportune time to uh, just pop over briefly to uh, Mansfield Park. It's Hoyk against Kelso. The last we heard it was 47-7 to the Greens. What's the latest, David Ferguson? Yes, we're 18 minutes into the second half. Hoyk started the second as they did the first, really flying out the traps with two good tries, finished off by number eight Jay Linton and Kyle Brunton just two minutes later. Hoyt, Kelso have come back into it. They're, they're having a good go. They're certainly trying to get into that half, but um, Andrew Mitchell had a great break again from counter-attack when Kelso were doing really well, but he picked it up and it was only a fine try-saving tackle by Archie Barber on the 22 that stopped him. So Hoyt certainly in the dom dominant at the moment. There's been a little stop in the try scoring, but uh, you can only see this game going one way in this second half. At the moment, we've got 21 minutes still to play in this second half and it's Hoyk 47, Kelso 7. David Ferguson at Mansfield Park. Latest scores, Glasgow Hawks 20, Mar 21. A real ding-dong in the West Coast battle there. Hoyk 47, Kelso 7 as we've just heard. Heriot's Blues 17, Enbrackies 15 is the latest score. We did mention that there were uh, uh, conflicting things. <laughs> the reason for that is the second 15s between the two are also playing with a very, very similar scoreline. But in the first it's 17-15 to Heriot's Blues at the moment. Musselburgh 7, Curry 17 and here at Philip Hall Selkirk 46, it's Jed Forrest 28 Donald Nicholls has been helped off the field, he's been replaced by Jamie Turnbull, so another set of brothers on the uh, on the pitch at Philip Hall, along with the Eason's over, over here, it's just and I'm assuming that the Hauser brothers as well, you'll know that from your Jed yeah, Forrest days, yeah the Hauser brothers um, their dad way. is Mike Howe they used to play prop for for Hoyk a long time ago, well, yeah, um, Mike is a very good rugby player and uh, quite a good coach at the time as well. So, now nah, both the lads are good players, um, and I'm sure they'll be a, a force in the in the Jed Forest team for the next few years. And Jack Howe off the field to play at the moment, uh, injured earlier on in the first half. Yeah, you get injured. Yeah, I've missed. I think Jed will have missed Jack Howe playing. Um, he's obviously damaged his, his shoulder. Um, ben Howe's the younger of the two. Okay. Ben plays a fair bit of his rugby up at Stirling as well. He's a good. Good rugby player. Callum Anderson now at first receiver, kicks downfield, centre field, and it's uh, bounced fortunately, or well, almost fortunately for Ross Nixon, but well covered by Dan Wardrop, who managed to get back in time. And now the spiral up and under from Gary Monroe, an excellent kicker. Callum Anderson just watches this bounce, and Finlay Whelan's then has to gather. He's uh, lost his foot in and then thrown the ball back for Callum Anderson, who then puts in a sliding challenge for Robbie Shearer Gip to gather and then kick downfield. Finlay Whelan's is going to have to get back on his five metre line to try and clear this. Some good running and evasive running there but running straight into the chest of Jamie Turnbull who was just caught in the wrong position there for the home side as uh, Selkirk looked to try and clear their lines and get downfield after a little mix up in the backfield. And the hesitation came from the not wanting to catch the bomb spiral from, from Gary Munro they just left it lying a wee bit and then that created a wee bit a couple of mistakes by the Selkirk and you find now they're five metres from their own line A chance for Jed Forrest to turn the screw and put some pressure on the home side a few changes in that forward pack from the team that started. They make a weekly story, Hind and Lauder now all on the field. The story and Lauder were first half replacements. And we'll see what change this makes. James Bett, Callum Turbull and Jamie Turnbull in the forwards for Selkirk now, which is a, a change in the second half from the team that lined up at the start of the fixture. It's a solid scrum from Jed Forrest and Bambrick is uh, digging about in that scrum to get the ball to his fly half Monroe who tries to launch it a little bit wider but it's the, the bouncing the ball has been gathered by Mark Glenn and then Roth just uh, goes straight to the heart of the Selkirk ruck and 
notices that there's no protection there and then they go again and do exactly the same and then now picking round the left hand side as Selkirk just encroaching that offside line free ball coming here for Jed Forrest as they currently trail 46 points to 28 we've got 20 minutes or so left in this game Jed Forrest will be looking to try and score quickly and seize this opportunity as they're now 5 or 4 metres shy of the Selkirk line round the left hand side they go they're going to try and go quickly again keep the tempo high and keep the Selkirk defence moving round the corners the ball has just spilled out but it's spilled fortunately in the hands of Clark Skeldon who just dives towards the line the referee Time off. is signalling that there's perhaps an injury in there and I think that was a quick gesture as well that I think it that's looks like Brisbane's hurt his knee there James, okay. James Sorry, Bell James on the Bell, ground apologies yeah it's wriggling his way from the breakdown. It was a quick flap of the hand. I thought it was a try there by Skeldon, but it seems to he seemed to have been short. He's carrying really well, Dan Wardrop as well and Blade Roth have all played really well. Had done a lot of carrying for, for the Jed Park today. And Bruce Riddle's also done a lot of carrying, but on this occasion it's the water that he's carrying as he's made his way towards that injury and he's just went round the back. It was a brilliant carry there from the, the Selkirk front row who's uh, injured at the moment, unavailable for the suitors, but James Bett is back on the field of play and he's... Uh, managed to shake off that injury he's currently carrying a knee injury but Bambrick now gives the ball to the on Russian Jamie Hind as he looks to he's encroach this defence yet again now Bambrick throws it a little bit wider to Blake Roth who's not able to get the ball through the hands That's wider right. to the, the loitering wide channels there and I think Selkirk have perhaps Way turned on, over yeah. the ball because the Selkirk defenders are quickly retreating back towards a defensive position to defend any sort of exit strategy that Selkirk are going to deploy here and it looks like Aaron McComb is going to be in charge of that strategy Box kick downfield, just up towards the 22 meter line, and Selkirk live to fight another day. Excellent tackle by Josh Welsh in there. He uh, made a huge hit on Blade Roth, try saving tackle, uh, and Selkirk managed to get a turnover and clear, clear their lines, but they're still under pressure inside that 22 area. Another chance to test this line out. In replacement set, lads. In set, replacement yeah. hooker there, Michael Stay Weekly, is going to be throwing in. And plays a lot of time in the back row as well. A very skillful, experienced Ball player for Jed Forrest. And he's hit his target. The mall has uh, run aground before it really got going. And then they find Monroe. He's not getting any, any option to pass this. So he goes for the crossfield kick, looking to turn Whelans. Whelans has let that ball bounce straight into the hands of Murdoch, who's uh, just lifted high as Glenn just floats it back in field to Lewis Walker. But it's a forward pass there from Jed Forrest as they look to try and be innovative in the wider channels to stretch the circuit defence. Yeah, and, and Jed's, Jed's oh. recognised that. There is a weakness on that on that um, left-hand wing, um, without a doubt. Uh, Gary recognised that there and put a really good cross-field kick in. Young Murdoch on the wing on this, on this Jed side there, done really well to try and turn over that ball. Scott Murdoch, one of the uh, best electrical apprentices to come through Borders College, <laughs> I must say. He was a, a pleasure to teach. He's a really, a really, really good young man. And he must have just come back into the rugby again. Yeah. Certainly, he, um, he was out with, through the thistle and everything, yeah, and then maybe disappeared for a couple of years. Playing last night as well. Yeah, great. In that great game stuff. at Riverside Park. Yeah. With and that's benefited a lot, hasn't it? Five. Yeah. These second team games on the Friday nights, giving Six. players opportunities to play and then have the opportunity to play on a Saturday afternoon in, in the Premiership game. Scrum is again solid from Selkirk, picked at the base by Andrew McComb. He runs horizontally across the pitch, not making much inroads, but he is able to get the ball back for Selkirk, who's managed to pass it back into Callum Anderson in that draw downfield off the boot. He's made some good territory, and the assistant referee, I think, has been rather kind with that mark there for that line-out, but he's uh, managed to get out in between the 22 yeah. And the 10 metre line, as we're going to see the introduction of it, Blake Cullen. And it looks like he's going to be replacing Cammy Eason. So there'll be a slight reshuffle there in the back division. Good young player, a lot of speed and gas. Good sevens player, so it's great to see him getting a, getting a wee run as well. I wonder if we're going to see Nixon go to 10 or if it's perhaps going to be Callum Anderson coming up slightly. And some more replacements as Walker. Lewis Walker's withdrawn as well as the line out is accurate for Jed Forrest. Luke Petty's having to recycle himself towards the back of this mall. This has been a little bit more fruitful this time for Jed Forrest who managed to nudge it from in between the 10 metre line and the 22, closer towards that 22. Now the heels of the Selkirk defence now digging in on that 22 metre line. And Jed Forrest are craning and crabbing that 
Malt sideways to try and find that little gap and that weakness in the defence. They've got the advantage. Bambrick now. He feeds Monroe. Again, cross-field kick, but this one is uh, more direct towards Shearer Gibb. He's now got a chance for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. He looks to float it back inside, but a little bit of miscommunication there as Bambrick is there in support. He finds Cranston. He yeah. goes low and barges his way forward towards that 22-metre line again. The advantage is still there for the visitors, but the more time that oozes out of this clock is it's certainly more favourable for the home side. The referee going to come back for the penalty. We've got about 14 minutes left in this uh, Premiership clash between Selkirk and Jed Forrest. Selkirk currently leading 46 points to 28 after a, a breathless first half. And Munro now has got a chance to just uh, stab it downfield and... Scott, and it's the, up to you. And the maverick that is Gary Munro once again. 22. Isn't it strange that, you know, some, some fantastic 22. skills Gary's, Gary's done the day and then that little bit of lack of concentration. Um, normally a, a kick that's very simple for him to kick it into the corner. Finn Russell like at times when he, in his younger days. And he, he's missed touch and it's now a 22 drop out for Selkirk. Quick update from Mansell Park. Hoyk 61, Kelso 7 is the latest. And uh, west of Scotland 5, Burmuir 23 at Burnbray. That is a, a huge scoreline coming in from Mansfield Park. And obviously yeah. after the defeat against it's Mark... It's a bit of a statement, isn't it? Yeah, I think that is a, a good reaction and that's what Matty Douglas would have been looking for. Um, obviously Kelso finding the going tough, but obviously yeah. their undefeated start to their Premiership campaign is uh, it's a formality that it's going to be coming to an end at the, the end of the 80 minutes at Mansfield Park. But we still have a lot to play for here at Philip Hawk. We've got the 12 minutes or so left and Jed Forrest are still uh, within touching distance. Uh, 46 points to 28, but to get closer and closer towards a victory, they're going to have to score in the next couple of minutes because Bambrick now is feeding the ball to Skeldon and Cranston then, that 12, that inside centre running hard and attritional play. Monroe. A bit wider to Glenn. A little kick of the heels again for the fullback who's had a, Ducks into it, an exciting game. And is testing the wider channels yet again. And now Jamie Hind with the, the blue scrum cap just digging his head down into that contact area with the ball in hand. Then recycling himself to clear out and then eventually Ben Howe carrying forward and charging, leading with his right shoulder. Monroe with that flat pass has found Lewis Elder. He has to dive to grab that ball. Scott Murdoch is there clearing out, but perhaps just in from the side. So he's going to go back for the penalty for Jed Forrest, and it will give a chance for Gary Monroe to, again, perhaps show some of his better kicking mm -hmm. attributes. Again, good good play by Jed. You know, touchline to touchline. Good couple of carries, one by Howe, one by Cranston there. And then the circuit defence are quite comfortable, to be fair. Um, maybe that extra pass that said Jed were doing in the, in, the, in the first half would probably help a lot. Just moving that point of contact from a defensive point of view and an attacking point of view. Managed to kick towards the 22 metre line, centre field, so it was always going to be a, a challenging kick to get it as close as possible to that 5 metre line. But it gives Michael Weekly a chance to hit his target. And then for that driving mall, perhaps, to make an impact up front, a couple of the forwards uh, loitering in centre field now. Hind and Howe are out there. But it's been flat back for Selkirk and James Bett is there, scoops up the ball, feeds it to Turnbull and it is Callum Turnbull who's got the ball in hand. Oh. And he's managed to break the challenge there inside and then Cranston is still lying prone on the ground. The heavily strapped left knee of his is uh, being clutched as we speak. And that's a great breakaway from the forward now. Jamie Turnbull feeding Anderson in the pocket and he's spotted some space inside the 22 and Finlay Whelans has uh, certainly got his wheels on and it's been guddled by Elder. He looks to try and break free, offloads back inside. Scott Murdoch now just uh, stabs it downfield and it's a, a wise choice from the, the right-hand winger to kick it off the field of play. And Cranston still lying down on the ground. But Selkirk yeah. going from coast to coast, 46 points to 28, they lead. Yes, indeed. Let's go uh, back into the uh, the scores that's coming through at the moment. Still Glasgow Hawks 27, Mar 28 in the West Country uh, West West Country Derby, <laughs> West Coast Derby. That's a different place and a different country. Hoyk 61, Kelso 7, latest score. Herriot's Blues 17, Edinburgh 18. Musselburgh 7, Curry uh, 34, not so close in that one. And over here it's uh, Selkirk 46, it's uh, Jed Forest 28. International 
41, Air 41, Dundee 19, Bigger Nil, Melrose 31, GHA 33, Highland 14, GHK 31, Gala 12, and Watsonians 12, Glasgow Aki 17 is the latest score as well. International 2, Aberdeen 10, Laswade 12, high scoring 1 at Scremerston, it's Berwick 28, Falkirk 48, Kirkcaldy 7, Newton Stewart 20, and International League 3, we go just briefly, Carthus 17, Hiller Jordan L 19, and Dumfries 17, Hamilton 19. Accurate line out again from Selkirk. The hookers have been hitting their targets. The jumpers have been effortlessly lifted throughout the whole game as Nixon now just uh, lumps it into the sky. Kick chase on, just blob on the 22. Shira Gibb is underneath that and it's as safe as you like from the Jed Forest winger. Manages to get his uh, graze his knees on the grass so the referee calling for the tackle to be completed as Hind carries forward, hits the free arm and tips it on and offloads as uh, Jed Forrest now escape their 22 as Ferguson who's re returned to the field of play. He manages just to offer his services as an auxiliary scrum half and then it's eventually on to Monroe and he puts that big towering spiral in again and it's just went out on the full, well watched by Aaron McComb and Jed Forrest and Gary Monroe was gesturing, it was a beautiful it kick. Yeah, it was, it was a great kick, it was taken back in, though, so he was unfortunate there. Um, Adam McComb obviously knew that and he just let it go. What's interesting for me, that's Cranston off now as well, looks as if he, he possibly has a serious injury to his knee. Um, Lewis Walker is off of the field as well, and um, Young Howe's off at number seven. At what cost does this game have? Because Circuit's yeah. picked up a, f a couple of injuries as well today. It's been a great team game for the spectators. We've enjoyed covering it as well. But, you know, at what cost later on? Because these are two sp two of the smaller clubs within the Premiership that, that haven't got possibly the big squads that other teams have. Adam McComb from that line-out has uh, been able to gather the ball. It's been tipped on from uh, Callum Turnbull. He finds it uh, a bet who was there. Penalty advantage. An advantage coming for Selkirk as well as they try and knock on the door of that 50-point mark. Grant Sooty finds uh, Ross Nixon and then Whelans has then opened it up and thrown the dummy and he's going to go in for a brace. Arkin is way towards the uprights but he's uh, not going to make it because he's just been flapped to ground but he grounds the ball and uh, Selkirk do get over that 50-point mark and it's now 51 points to 28. The accurate from the line out, stretching the plate. It was inventive as well. The loose balls were scrapped up and then Whelan's yeah. just goes in for a try. Sometimes that loose ball can just cause that defence to stutter a wee bit and that's exactly what happened there. Young Whelan's picked it up. Good strength from Nixon and Sutty uh, to create the space for Young Whelan's to score almost underneath the post. Towards the dying embers of this game, you've got to say that's perhaps the... Uh, the game beyond Jed Forrest now. I was uh, going to wait a few minutes until we perhaps talked about the injuries, but uh, you bring it up at a really important point because these squads are not the strongest. Um, and we'll just wait until Callum Anderson has converted, or we'll tried to and attempted to convert this try. We'll perhaps get your thoughts on the depths of these squads. Callum Anderson now on the 22. A left-footed kicker, so it's his favourable side and effortlessly strokes it just to the left-hand side of the uprights and it's not successful, but 51 points to 28. I don't think Selkirk at the beginning of this game would uh, begrudge that sort of scoreline with uh, five or so minutes left to go here. But, yeah, definitely back to your point about injuries. They're not... They're not hugely deep squads, are they? No, it's worry, it's worrying times for both both sets of clubs. I would suggest, you know, and, and a lot of it probably is down to the pre-season. You know, some of these Back guys will have had a good pre-season. Some of them will have possibly have missed a wee bit of it, and that and that creates problems straight away. So if you start taking contact and taking extra knocks and they're a little, they they start to to play in your mind, and and you get yourself under a wee bit of pressure there. Um, there are small squads and it'll be interesting to see how we all cope with it in the next few weeks Nine offside. Bet was offside there and it's a, a quick penalty there by Bambrick and he looked to try and go around the outside of uh, Jamie Turnbull who did well just to uh, ghost the, the number nine into a position as Robbie Shearer Gibb just hairs his way through the defensive line arcing towards the corner and Shearer Gibb is going to reply straight away that is a fantastic try. Brilliant try there. Well yeah. worked. Great awareness from Bambrick and they kept the ball alive. But Robbie should have given, if you give him an opportunity like that, that's the sort of pace that he can exhibit. It was another good long pass by Gary Monroe. And um, yeah. Dan Wardrobe, I think, had caught it. Created a wee bit of space and passed that inside arc and run to, to Robbie Shearer Gibb, who thoroughly deserved his try. He's played well in defence today, Robbie. Yeah, he's been tested on that far side. He's uh, was up against uh, Josh Welsh early on and then... He's had Finlay Whelan's ghosting round that side in the second half. Obviously now up against Blake Cullen, but uh, he's been well tested from the boot of, like I said, Callum Anderson. 
Aaron McComb and, and Cam Eason early on. And Jed have still got that threat. You know, you can see that there. One, one, two quick passes out into space, create, a, create a space. And, uh, and Jed, Jed's got that ability to score from anywhere, haven't they? They're never, ever going to lose that. It's bred within them. It's in that re their kind of almost remit. Right foot kick from Munro, and it uh, looks like it's going to have the distance to go far down the Yarrow Valley, but it's accurate as well. And it's a, an additional two points, so it means that it's 51 points to 35. Can you believe that scoreline here at Philip Hawk? That is a huge, huge scoreline to have in the Premiership. Perhaps signalling that both of these defences, as we said in the first half, are very porous, and when they're going to be tested against the quality teams towards the top of the table, it's something that they need to work on because they've both yeah. displayed that they can score tries. Yeah, but no, but without a doubt. You can see, and you can see that with the scores coming in for the two weeks prior to this. Um, what, what I would say is for the spectator, it's been a great game of rugby. Yeah, it's uh, certainly got your money's worth here at Philip Hawk if you've come down to watch this. If you're listening on the radio, well, thanks for joining us. And There's been tries galore in the Borders derbies. This has perhaps been a little bit more evenly shared than the one at Mansfield Park, but we'll bring you up to speed with that as we get the, the final results coming in across the country as Jed Forrest break out of their own 22 and Gary Munro right-footed kick downfield. And again, this one's going to go out in the full. He's just sliced that off of his uh, right boot. And it's going to be brought back and it looks like Selkirk are going to benefit from the, yet another unforced error from the fly yeah. half from Jed Forrest. I'll quickly jump in here and tell you that Glasgow Hawks have taken the lead um, at Balgrae against Marts now. Glasgow Hawks 30, Mart 28. A tight, tight game there as well. It's really difficult to Tends pick make sure there's pick a out the form before you transfer it, otherwise I'll need to play away. The referee just signalling what he's expecting to see at this passage of play, but obviously that result at Ball Grey or the, that latest scoreline from Ball Grey has shown how competitive this Ball Premiership play. is as the Malt uh, runs aground. Ball's available, sack was fine. The referee happy with the defensive effort from Jed Forrest as McComb launches the ball to Grant Sooty and he looks to pick the hole. Rock. Not able to as uh, Nixon then floats the ball into the hands of uh, McComb and then Welsh now hearing towards that Jed Forrest line. He's got an opportunity, he's angling his run towards the try line. And Selkirk score yet again, and the, the poorest defences are running amok here at Philip Hall because it's now 56 points to 35. I cannot believe the scoreline here. And You could look at it two ways, mind. The attack was very good there, good set of hands, the ball was out in front at every opportunity to run onto it. And then when you've got somebody like Josh Welsh running onto it with pace down that far side, uh, young Glenn missed a, missed a tackle and just, just came off his left foot and, uh, and managed to score. Just to the 15, 15 metre line, but very good try by Selkirk again, um, brimming with confidence. I would say getting near the end of the game, and um, and this will this will do them well today. You know, the, the, they've made a statement as well as what Hike has across across at Mansfield Park. Conversion attempt for Callum Anderson on the 22 again, similar position. He tries to get it closer there. Does just that. It's accurate this time. A good conversion attempt from. The Selkirk fullback had for his uh, try earlier on in the game. And just a reminder, you'll be able to watch the, the full three and a half hour highlights of these tries later on in the week. Yeah, when Stuart Cameron gets through all of the action here at Philip Hawk, obviously we've got the Hoyt Kelso game as well. So it's going to be an extended bumper edition of tries from Borders Rugby this weekend. And it's well gathered from the air by Selkirk from the restart. They'll be still looking to try and build on their, their lead. 58 points to 35. They currently lead here. And it's been an exciting game. And Nixon, they're kicking it downfield. And then they're able to get in behind. Andrew Grant Sooty was first there. The penalty is going to go the way of Selkirk. The referee did gesture that it was going to Jed. But the Selkirk do get the, the penalty, and rightfully so. It was a slight nudge on the outside centre as he looked to get the ball. Clever kick by Ross Nixon once again. And Ross has had a good game today, considering he's, he's hardly done any pre-season training. Um, and back just slotted back into that 12-10 access quite quite easily, uh, as, as you would expect for an experienced, experienced player. Yeah, he's earned his stripes over the years, hasn't he, Ross Nixon, to come back in and support his side and similar to the role that Michael Weekly plays for Jed yeah. Forrest you know he's uh, he's got his uh, he's got his experience under the belt and he's coming effortlessly back into the side to offer up some support a final whistle at Mansfield Park it's Hoyk 61 Kelso 7 it's a huge result for Hoyk as they look to try and get back to winning ways and they extend their 
long unbeaten run at home. This is Jamie Turnbull is able to get the ball back to Selkirk and then gets round and clears out the defensive Jed players as well. Cochrane tipping the ball onto Callum Turnbull now. The Turnbulls have worked hard since they've come off the bench and now Jake Milburn who tries scoring prop in his first game for Selkirk as they look to knock at the door at 60 points now. Andrew McComb tipping the ball on to the on rushing Josh Welsh. Aaron McComb now digging about for the ball at that ruck and it's given to Petty. He tips it on to Nixon. Nixon then just launches the ball to Anderson. He throws the dummy, goes on the inside of Scott Murdoch. He's then ragged all to ground. He presents the ball back nicely for, for Selkirk because the players filter around the corner. They've got Petty, they've got Bet, and they've got Turnbull there. And those players all congregate and support Aaron McComb to get the ball back now. And now Andrew McComb tips it on to Cochrane. A slight forward pass there. The referee not happy with that. From you into him. Has gone forward. Well, we've certainly still got time for this yeah. to play. Last Come couple on. of minutes here. And it's going to be a put into the scrum for Jed Forrest. But Selkirk are again looking composed with the ball in hand. And you would say this has perhaps been one of those things that Selkirk have need for, for a bit of confidence and a, bit, a little bit of game management as well. Yeah, and I think it's been great for Selkirk today. You know, you would have took this... This was a huge result you took right at the beginning, so um, I think it bodes well for, well for the future. Obviously, we've we've managed to get this um, the prop in uh, that's made a difference today. Uh, Ross Nixon's played well at, at centre, and and I think people like Andrew McComb just go about their job really quietly along with McClymont, who leads from the front, and um, and, and that's certainly been. You know, if you, if you can give those back division some ball, you can see how how confident they can be and score some tries. And um, it, Blue. yeah, listen, it's going to be a tough season. Uh, we we got off to a bad start, but I think um, there's certainly some some sprouting signs there that that, that they can uh, go on and achieve better things in the next few weeks. Cameron Eason is going to replace Jake Milburn, which is going to mean that Callum Turnbull wasn't at the front row. Ross Nixon at uh, flanker. So Cam Eason is going to go in to fly half. Good there. Whether that means he gets the bathwater ahead of Fraser tonight is uh, yet remain to be seen. But Jed Forrest break free from deep inside their own 22. And the number 20s now collide because Archie Penman has just managed to tackle Scott Murdoch there on the stand side here. At Philip Hawk, just a reminder that Selkirk have got a, a handsome lead here in the final play-ins of this Premiership battle. 58 points to 35, they currently lead. Jed Forrest float the ball wide through Gary Munro and Glenn then gives it to Sheena Gibb. Tackle well marshalled there on the bank inside. Jed Forrest playing expansive rugby, looking to stretch and pointed contact, but it's been picked off by Andrew McComb as the ball was just floated up in the air. He was loitering with intent, clutched the ball and then haired it towards the line. And that is uh, certainly the gloss on what has been an impressive performance here from Selkirk in attack. Maybe not defence, but certainly in attack all afternoon. And there's some, some, some tired bodies out there. Everybody's been lying about. There's some tired uh, bodies in here. <laughs> certainly is. It certainly is. And, and you know what, Clark Skelton has played really, really well today. Probably didn't deserve that. I just thought he could just tip on there and Andrew McComb read it really well and scampered under the post over 30 metres. 63 points to 35, conversion to come. Cameron Eason right in front of the uprights and he just uh, chips it over. The assistant referees are in agreement that that takes Selkirk's tally to 65 points to Jed Forrest's 35. So both border sides this afternoon winning and scoring 60 points and it's an emphatic victory here for Selkirk. And they manage to get the win over their new rivals, Jed Forrest. And they manage to put a little bit of daylight in between the two sides at the bottom of the table in the Premiership. And it's Selkirk who win 65 points to 35 here. Yes, just the 100 points here then at Philip Hawk. But 68 of them down at Mansfield Park. It ended 61-7 uh, to Hoyk against Kelso. We can rejoin David Ferguson. We, we talked about how difficult it was going to be for Kelso today. We talked earlier about having a number of teenagers in the team missing boys with injury and suspension. But there was no doubt that Hoyk were out to make a mark today. They know they suffered last week against Mar, suffered early on and didn't get back into that game. Well, they never gave Hel Kelso any chance here today. Nine tries through the game, five in the first half, four in the second half and um, quite a standout in um, fullback Kirk Ford today, scoring three tries and converting eight out of nine conversions from all over the park and a few touchline ones. 
Um, the forwards probably will, will argue with me that Kirk perhaps doesn't deserve man of the match because they put in so much uh, work. Uh, you can't take it away from um, Kirk, but um, they put out so, in so much um, effort um, to really put Kelso on the back foot. They did it in bursts, and the second half, um, you know, you have to give Kelso a lot of credit. They came back, they fought really hard, and, and although that score is quite. Um, you know, deflating for them, there's no doubt about that. Um, it could have been worse, I have to say, in that second half because of the level of domination that Hoyk had. Um, they scored tries just in two, two try bursts, Jay Linton and Kyle Brunton, within two minutes of each other, just five, six minutes into the second half. Finished off good attack, um, one cracking attack, which was a real, the ball must have gone through about 10, 11 pairs of hands before it was finally touched down um, by Kyle Brunton. A cracking um, break from their own half there, Hoyk. And then later, around the hour mark, we saw Kirk Ford going over for his uh, third try, his hat trick. And a great break just a few moments later from Andrew Mitchell. Um, he's certainly looking back to his best, the centre. Very hard to live with today. Finally, he was brought down by Dwayne Patterson on the edge of the Kelso 22, having broken from his own half. But number seven flanker there, Callum Rennick, on his shoulder to take the ball and go over. 61-7 is what we had with Ford's conversion going over. Kelso fought really hard in that second half. Um, they, they took the game to Hoyk. They did pierce the defence on several occasions. Bruce McNeil, as you'd expect, making some good yards. Um, Dwayne Patterson is, is clearly an exciting talent in the, the Kelso ranks. His kicking and chasing and his speed um, gave Hoyk some problems. But despite doing that, by the time they got to that 22, that Hoyk 22, the door was firmly shut there. The Hoyk uh, players regrouped very quickly. They circled back in and they made sure there were no real chances, no sniffs of their home line in that second half and you know p potentially they could have scored more tries they certainly were denied a few times with some good try saving tra tackles to wing out Archie Bar Barber producing a couple of those for Kelso but you know I'm pretty sure Hoyk will be very happy that they have bounced back in some style from that first defeat in 18 months away to Mar last week by really showing that they mean business again and they will be in the running for this Premiership title once again I would think this season. Final score here at Mansfield Park, Hoyk 61 Kelso 7. Thank you David and you're going to try and nab someone from uh, Hoyk very very shortly. If we've got time just before the end of the programme we'll try and bring that to you but let's uh, have a look at some of these results extraordinary uh, day yet again. Glasgow Hawks 30, Mar 35 a full time result. Hoyk 61 Kelso 7 as we've just heard Heritage Blues 24, Edinburgh Ackies 18. So uh, Edinburgh Ackies suffering a first defeat which means that Curry are clear at the top. They've demolished uh, Musselburgh at Stony Hill this afternoon 46 points to 7 they have won in that one and if you've just joined us where have you been? You've missed 100 points at Philip Hawks. Selkirk 6 65, Jed Forrest 35, and uh, for all their effort, Jed Forrest just getting the one point for the try bonus. Into National 1, Air 46, Dundee 24 at Millbrae. Dundee, I think, uh, earning a, a very good um, try bonus there. Bigger nil, Melrose 36 is a huge result. GHA against Highland still waiting on that to be confirmed, but it's 38-14, the last we'd heard. So that will be Highland's first defeat of the season as well. It really is an open league. GHK, who lost by, what, 68 points? to 7 last week. This week a different ball game completely. GHK 31, Gala 26. So Gala coming back late in the day to probably get uh, a try bonus and a losing bonus there as well. So they'll be reasonably satisfied with that. But uh, GHK dominating that one in the early stages. Still waiting on Watsonians against Glasgow Ackies. The last we'd heard it was 17-12 to Glasgow Ackies at uh, half time at uh, Myerside. International two more high scoring affairs here. Aberdeen Grand 22 last week 34 is a latest score full time at Scrummerston Berwick 35 Falkirk 48 I don't know what's been in the water today but uh, whatever it is it's uh, certainly produced tries for us Kirkcaldy 7 Newton Stewart 20 is a latest score National 3 Carthur Queen's Park 17 Jordan Hill 19 is a latest score Dumfries 17 Hamilton 14 is a latest score it's finished in Orkney Orkney top of the table still Orkney 27 Preston Lodge 
24. Also west of Scotland, 12, Boroughmuir 23 is a final result there. A couple of uh, results from the East League as well. Inverleith 12, Earlston 40. Earlston having a completely different season to uh, last year and that is uh, a good result for them. Earlston winning by 40 points to 12. We're going to plug in Aaron McComb now because he's going to be talking with Dale Clancy. Firstly, uh, congratulations, 100th appearance for, for Selkirk. Yeah, didn't know that until uh, Kelly came and got me from the pitch there. You did that. <laughs> um, so, no, nah, obviously it's a, a great honour to play for my home team um, to get 100 caps. It's all I've wanted to do since I was a young boy, but I think the, the win was more than anything for, for me today. And in terms of that, there's, there's almost now the, the kind of Jekyll and Hyde of Selkirk, the attacking play today. Now, obviously, you racked up 65 points. Attacking-wise, it's not a problem for you. But, you know, in terms of that game, how does it feel in terms of your attack? You've got the players and the personnel to, to really stretch teams, don't you? Yeah, I think we have got the, the personnel to stretch teams, but um, as you say, it's attack takes care of itself. Um, defensively, we're letting 35, which is quite disappointing. Uh, we'll go back Tuesday and we'll assess it, watch the video, see where we went wrong. But again, positive day for Circuit Rubble Club to, to get 65 points. So me, and, me and Scott were talking uh, during the commentary, obviously, about the clashes of styles. and uh, How does it feel on the pitch in terms of your defence? What do you feel sell, uh, Jed Forrest were really testing you with? And where do you think they got the upper hand? Because 35 points away from home is a big tally for any team to score. Uh, but where, do you, where did you feel on the pitch that they were getting the better of you? Yeah, credit to Jed scoring 35 points. I, th- I thought they really, really played quite good rugby uh, in the, about 35 just after half-time as well. Uh, I think physicality, they kind of got to us a wee bit. Um, but again, they played some good stuff out wide. Um, they're probably in the same boat as us, you know, struggling for a team week in, week out. But credit to them at the end of the day, they played some good stuff, stretched us, played tight. But credit to them again. Yeah, it's the same conversation with Jed as it is to Selkirk, but there's one different component in terms of that you got the victory. Now, that must do loads for your confidence in terms of the club because you do have a lot of really really good players here just it's been a couple of a couple of really difficult weeks to start the season but that it must do a lot for your confidence yeah definitely you know like you hear all the stories Selkirk Jed will struggle this year and I we probably will but to get 65 points play some good stuff and click as a team today is really really positive for Selkirk Rugby Club uh, we go back Tuesday as I say and, and build again and go, go tomorrow next week it'll not be easy any game in this league is not going to be easy um, so I would just build again from, from Tuesday So then obviously a couple of injuries as well um, during today's game but in terms of your preparation like for Mar compared to against Jed does it change at all because again they're a completely different team they're probably you know like Jed on steroids perhaps you know very very physical does your preparation change at all? Uh, nah not really I mean we've worked, worked hard at training throughout the last three four weeks and, and at these first three games and uh, it's going to be tough going up there, but nothing changes for us. We will come down Tuesday, Thursday, work hard, get some contact skills, and then we get in our attack shape, and hopefully it all clicks again like today. Well, brilliant. Well done. Uh, congratulations, firstly, on your 100th appearance, but well done for your victory today, Aaron, and good luck for the rest of the season, buddy. Cheers. There we are. That's Aaron McComb talking to Dale Clancy, and uh, one player exits, another one comes in. We're going to bring in uh, the Jed Forest captain, that's uh, Clark Skeldon, um, who's uh, about to talk to Dale as well. But what uh, what a, a marathon we've had today! Hundred points at Filippo. 65 of them going the way of Selkirk, 35 going the way of Jed Forrest. And uh, we can now bring you that interview with Clark Skeldon, who's made his way into the stand, and he's talking with Dale Clancy. Hello, Clark. Obviously, you've got VIP access for the stand because it's obviously currently under re- uh, reconstruction here. But and let's start off with a positive for Jed Forrest. Attacking-wise, you've went away from home to a really difficult place and you've been able to score 35 points. That must do quite a lot for your confidence. Oh, you were saying that um, just in the huddle there. You can't come away from home and score 35 points in the Premiership. It's no easy done. And, uh, you know, that's the that's the good side of things, but you can't take away for the, the negative of the, the opposite side of the scoreboard. You can. That's been our Achilles heel for a while and... Okay, we've always kind of had that mentality where they'll score 30, we'll score 40 and it just doesn't work like that just now. So, you know, we need to work on that side, definitely. But you were able to impose yourself, especially in that first half. It did, there was times in that game where it looked like you could have out-muscled them. Is that what you felt on the pitch in terms of you were targeting Selkirk physically? Aye, we thought up front we had a good enough pack to take them on up front. Um, I think their kicking game, you know, was a big factor. I thought their 15 kicked really well and we struggled to go to our half at times. And they kind of swamped us in there and got a lot of points before half time, just keeping us in our own half. And um, but no, when we did build pressure, we were able to score points, and you know that's what we we're looking to do. But 
Um, in the end, probably you know they built the pressure and, and scored the most points. Yeah. So defensively, as a, as a captain, obviously the the, the manage the, the leaking of that amount of points, it must you know not maybe not ring alarm bells, but there, there must be areas that you think are really really concerning at the moment. Uh, the hardest thing for me is I think it's a lack of effort. I think there's a lot of boys out there who are, are happy to fight at tackles and that. It's just that collective cohesionness and and try to defend together instead of individual which we've maybe been guilty in the past I think it's wrong we're, we're missing a lot of key players as boys playing out of position today I'll not blame that too much again there's a lot of individual tackles went astray the day but I think it is it's just that that cohesion the, uh, defending together that you know their outside backs had a, had a field day of the day but um, you know it's something we'll have to work on going forward but you touched on it it was, it was my next point in terms of talking about the injuries but you know that 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 kind of continuity throughout the team you know it's difficult to try and get that cohesion if you're if you're missing players now obviously there's a few players that went off today in terms of your squad in terms of what you're feeling you know is that going to have a huge impact on your on your team as the players coming back or you know where's the squad at yeah um, no there'll be boys coming back but I think what we've got today you know you see young Mark Glenn Scott Murdoch coming back in they're the kind of boys need to neuter for the for the future um, so can it's good to see them getting a run and and it is got to be a kind of season where they the boys are going to have to learn on the job. You know, young Jamie Ferguson at Hooker of the Day. You know, he, he's learning every week, and these boys will get better. You know, um, I'm not too worried about the boys coming back. To be honest, I think you have to stick with these boys and and give them opportunities and and get them better. Um, you know, and try and build that way because um, it, it will it will come. You know, give these boys time; it'll come. I, I believe that. I think uh, just before I ask you my final question, I think I must say Glenn and Ferguson were, especially the first thirty minutes or so, were, were really, really impressive in that game. But that obviously takes you on to next week, back at home against Musselburgh, and it must be a game that you're targeting for a for a win. I well, we said before this weekend that today and, and next week we're going to be massive for us uh, to try and build some momentum in the season. You know, it, it's well, you can look at it, we've gained a point today. It's a, it's a start, but going into next week, we need to try and pick up maximum points. And um, you know, back at home, we will be boosted by a, a couple of additions, hopefully. So, um, yeah, back in front of the rain crowd, back at Riverside, hopefully we can we can go into that and get some in. Again, we'll, we'll be confident we can go out and score tries. So as long as we can try and work on that defence. Hopefully get someone for that game as well. Well, obviously unlucky for the, the game today, obviously on the, the wrong side of a 65 to 35 scoreline, but individually, uh, another great effort. You're probably in the form of your life, Clark Skeldon, but good luck for the... Uh, for the right reception at the end. Uh, yeah, I think you disagree with me, but good luck with the rest of the season. Right. I'm sure we'll, we'll see you still. soon. Thank you. Fantastic, that's Clark Skeldon, captain of Jed Forrest. There will be better days ahead, I'm sure, uh, later on in this season, talking to Dale Clancy. Let's go to Mansfield Park. Bruce McNeil's there. Uh, Sean Muir is there. He ended 61 points to seven. David Ferguson. Yes, thanks, Stuart. We're joined, as you say, by Sean and Bruce. Both guys who know each other very well. Sean, I mean, we're talking about a statement that Hoyke have made today. You were disappointed to lose to Mar. Kelson, the receiving end this afternoon. I are not that bad a team, eh? After everything that was written last week. But now nah, look who, who knew who let herself do and who let the jersey do last Saturday. You know, the big emphasis on starting fast today and really stamping her authority on the game and I, th I thought the boys were outstanding from zero to eighty. It was it was a brilliant performance. What was the big difference then or the main difference between last week and this week? <laughs> we got a jolt last week. You kinda seen that we're no invincible, that kinda we thought that we had no losing last season. But now nah, look we got our eyes opened last week that this league is tough. We need to be on it every single week in uh Tuesday night session. That when the day started on Tuesday night, the boys ripped in on Tuesday night and we were absolutely outstanding. And we saw Kirk Ford, you know, putting every slot and slot on eight out of nine there, I think, today, scoring three tries himself. Um, you know, when you moved the ball, the pack took Kelso on and we knew that was going to happen today. You were very powerful up front, but you could move the ball and you scored some really good tries too. I, look, it, it just clicked. The forwards got over the gain line and gave the ball, uh, the backs the ball on the plate. And Kirk is probably the most underrated player in the league. He was he was sensational again today. And, nah, look, I, there was... We, seven or eight man of the matches out there. I thought Andrew Mitchell was back to his best. I thought he was very, very abrasive and dangerous. And we've just spoke Jay Linton. I thought he was massive as well. So our big players stood up and unfortunately for Kelso, it was today and we've, we've put a good score on them. We'll bring Bruce in here, Bruce. I mean, you're, you're you know, got a different role. You've got a lot of young players. We talked about ultimately six players that were there aged 18, 19. How difficult is it, um, you know, to get the players through a game like that? Listen, they always say that you know you learn more from your defeats, and geez, we learned a lot today about um, you know what this league is all about. Unfortunately for us, we've got um, the wounded animal, um, which is hike from from last week, and to be fair, we knew that was coming. 
we were under no illusion of what was going to come at us today. We just, um, 1 to 20, we just kind of dare say it went into our shells sort of thing and realised that uh, this league's not to be played with and we know that if we're not on it, that can happen every single week. So, 1 to 20, 1 to 30, Tuesday night, we'll get we'll get back to the grind and listen, we've got to keep looking forward. The, the thing for us as coaches is, is that we've got to look at that game and make sure that that does not happen again and learn from the mistakes, which there was plenty from. The good thing about this bunch is, is they're resilient and we've, uh, we've came a long way. So we know what needs to be done and we know that we have to be better. Back at home next week, uh, Glasgow Hawks coming down to you. They've lost today to Mar. Um, what kind of challenge do you expect there and, and how do you expect this Kelso team to bounce back from that? I expect much of the same, to be fair. You know, generally forward backs are just kind of bigger, stronger, and, and backs are bigger and stronger as well. So we know we know what's coming, but the thing for us is we have to focus on ourselves. We do a very little amount of analysis because we have to be in the paddock. We're only training Tuesday, Thursday, so we need to make sure that we get our own fundamentals right. Uh, and today, not many of them was there. We 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 actually pride ourselves on our defence and our work rate and, and being mongrels in a, in a typical Borders team, but. Listen, we've got to give Hike the, the full credit that they deserve. I thought they were outstanding, 1-15. to 15. They caused us trouble in the fours, caused us troubles in the back. Their control of the game was outstanding and, and we um, we just couldn't compete. Simple as that. Um, you always say that you learn more in the defeat and we will learn a lot from that and hopefully we get the right reaction on Tuesday night from the lads. Thank you very much, Bruce. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, it has been quite a game here at Mansfield Park. A lot of tries. Sadly for Kelso, they were all going in one direction. What a scoreline that was. 61 points to 7 for Hoyk against Kelso. And, uh, of course, over here at Philip Hall, 100 points we had in a 65-35 uh, victory for the, uh, the Selkirk team over Jed Forrest. Well, in the Premiership then, their closing headlines tonight, there were wins for Hoyk, Selkirk, Marr, Heriot's Blues and Curry. In National 1, the victories went the way of Ayr, Melrose, GHA, GHK and Watsonians. Results from Divisions 2, 3 and 4 will appear on our website at rugbyradio.co.uk as soon as they come in, so do check them out there. We'll be back next Saturday when we make our first visit this season to the Green Yards to cover Melrose against Air in National 1. Quick look at the Premiership table tonight then. Curry on top, unbeaten, 15 points. Second, Heriots with 13. Embraki slipped to third with 11. In fourth place, it's Marr on 10. Fifth is Hoik on 9. Sixth, Glasgow. Go Hawks on six, seven Selkirk on five, eight it's Kelso on five, ninth Musselburgh on four, and uh, tenth place. But with that one losing bonus point, are Jed Forest. Well, as I say, we'll be back next Saturday when we make our first visit to the Green Yards. Melrose against Air in National One should be an absolute cracker with both winning today. Don't forget our weekly podcast as well, Scottish Club Rugby Podcast. It's available every Thursday. And our third edition currently is online along with our other two episodes as well with Dave, Dale Clancy and myself. We'll be back here next Saturday on Rugby Radio between half two and five. Hope you can join us then. But for now, from me and the team, a very good night. Good night.